This is absolutely perfect. Thank you, Train, for showing up right at 11 o'clock. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much. So I'm still actually trying to go and put the uh, URL to our Patreon site so the Patreon members can see this early stream because I still don't know how to make this happen beforehand. So let's see, we've got... Uh Click it away. Post really quick, new post. I just typed in there. Oh, come on. Paste there and publish. Ah, oh, look at this. It's tiny again. Oh, this is the one thing that really annoys me with this switcher, right? It's just, this is a great switcher. It does a lot of really wonderful things, but it refuses to remember the settings for this little tiny window. So I'm like this micro Odin looking at this train going by. I'm like in scale to the, well, no, I'm bigger than the train. But it's like, what the heck? How come, how come, how come, how come? Why don't you remember? No, oh, because we got to adjust it live. It's not fun to actually have this be working like the way you want it to the whole time. Tab. Nope, oh, tab doesn't work. This is my one serious complaint about the switcher. There we go. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> That's not what I want. I'd rather have a full... Ah, there we are. We're all the way there. Hello. Good morning. Let me turn the audio off on the outside camera. Hello and good morning. Well, it's morning for me anyway. How's it going? Uh, it's Sunday. Welcome to the, uh, the early show. It's, um, uh, we're here at 11 o'clock. Uh, this is uh, you know, Sunday, uh, May, what, 2nd? Uh, welcome to my live stream, Odin Makes Live Stream. And Felicia is on her way. So one of the fun things we get to do is see her come in. All right, so seeing there's a lot of activity. So who's in the building? I hope Odin is. Yeah, yeah, oh, I'm here in the building. <laughs> it's just me right now. I'm actually the only one in the building right now of uh, Vatix. Alrighty, so we need to go over to, nope, nope, there it is. And we're gonna pop out the chat so I can see both the YouTube chat and we're gonna pop out the Discord I'm going to set, set up the Discord so I can see the Discord. There we are. All righty. Now I can see everybody's chat, right? Okay, good. And we have Trash Panda. Hello, Trash Panda. And I see we have Jonathan Wiesner. Hello. Uh, Artman2019. Uh, Trash Panda's right there with Train. So for those of you who may be tuning in after the fact, who aren't watching this live because this whole thing will be available to, to stream non-live later. What the heck was with the train? Uh, well, right outside my, uh, my building here, right behind me, I've got this lovely train line. That's, that's maybe 300, 400 yards away. It's, it's not very far, it might, be, it might be 500. I'm a pretty bad judge of that distance. So it's impossible to not hear the train uh, over my microphone when the train's going by. So instead of, you know, everyone just sort of talking about it whenever it happened during the live streams, because it did, and it, and it always does. We embraced it and stuck up a train cam. So we got train cam. So uh, yeah, it's just one of the goofy things that I wanted to do because it's the type of programming that I enjoy. So uh, hello again, everyone. Going back to saying hi to people who are in... Uh, no, Felicia, not yet, Trash Panda. She's on her way, so she'll be here very soon. Uh, Jerry Rig props, props, I'm here, great day. Good day, or I suppose for you, good evening. Uh, Nethead says, what's poppin'? Hello, Will, I'm just, I'm here killing time. Welcome to the, uh, the welcome to the pre-show. This is the Patreon exclusive pre-show. It's exciting. Uh, it's, it's where I get a chance to actually talk. I, I make fun of that, but it's, you know, it, it shouldn't be. Um, 
I'm just saying because I'm the only one here and uh, I can just start cutting out foam. But, uh, you know, this is the, the first hour for the live stream. This is the, the de dedicated hour for all of, all of you, my, my patrons. I really appreciate you guys. And here's a chance to do a, a live stream and a back and forth that's, that's just for us. And then at noon, we'll switch over to being a public live stream. And then everyone can join in and you'll see the huge difference in the chat log. <laughs> what happens when we go public. Just in case any of you weren't already aware. And also for all of you who are watching this in my future instead of my present. <clears throat> yep. So great. We have uh, Artman2019, NetHeads. Awesome. So uh, let's see, this past week, I've been working on getting a video ready to go together with Rebel Base Builds. So if you guys aren't familiar with Rebel Base Builds, you might want to go look at them. Uh, James is, uh, he has a YouTube channel that specifically is making props that are Star Wars props. And he's almost exclusively Rebel props, uh, which is interesting because I would probably build almost exclusively Imperial, but eh, you know, that's, that's just me. Um, the biggest thing he did recently was, uh, I, call, I always call it the gravity couch, but it's, it's the bench, it's the seat in the Millennium Falcon. It's what, it's what everybody's sitting on when they're playing the, I can't pronounce, the Jarek ch chess, whatever, the, ch the hollow chess. Uh, he's got that set up and he's gonna be building up his whole set to, to have the wall behind him and he'll, he'll make some other pieces to go around it. He's got an RT unit, he's got uh, the, you know, I don't remember the name of the Conehead single wheel droid from, from Rise of Skywalker, but he's got one of those. He's got himself a, a hollow data pad. We're doing a cooperative build. We're doing a, um, uh, yeah, it's a co-op. It's a, uh, what do you call it? Wow, spacing on that one pretty hard. You know, you, you, you get two channels working on the same project together. What we're doing is we're finally finishing the uh, um, Rebel Helmet that I had promised you guys two years ago on, <laughs> on, on Patreon. So it's, it's the Endor helmet that Leia and, and Luke and almost everyone but Han wore. Um, so we're getting that done. Uh, Felicia helped me with getting some of the fabric put together. So it's this, it's this big group effort, right? Uh, Felicia helped me get, get some of the pattern pieces put together. James modeled uh, the, the hard bits. So he's actually made some ear covers and 3D printed them and sent them to me. Um, and then I'm making the, the band and I actually finished making the band this morning. So I'm gonna be uh, finishing up the entire hel helmet after the build so I can start going into post-production tomorrow. Um, the other fun thing is we're gonna be putting together uh, a hollow chat. So I'll be talking with James independently later here today to make sure that we're, 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 we're working out how we're gonna do our hollow chat with each other, right? That's the, you know, the Jedi holds and you got the, we're, we're doing that because it's fun. <laughs> Trash Panda finally got his son Dorian up at 4 a.m. for the stream. Noise! <laughs> wow, that's early. Ah, collaboration is the word I'm looking for. Yes, it is. Collaboration is the word I'm looking for. Thank you. <laughs> so when is the Epic Cardboard collaboration? Uh, Ad Vixen, are you Epic Cardboard props? <laughs> that, that actually would, would I, I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> are you? <laughs> uh, Toothpick19, Odin, what's up, my man? Hello, Toothpick19. And Jerry Regis sees <laughs> your son's crying because he won't make him a tent. Make him a pillow fort. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while. So good. I'm glad we got a lot of lot of uh, activity happening here. Um, so what's happening? Um, you know, I'm so accustomed to having a co-host. I'm so accustomed to having someone else here that I can just talk to and bounce things off of. It's interesting to uh, think that I'm just I'm here, uh, which is fine. Because part of me is like, oh, I'll just get going on, 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 on cutting, which I could do, right? But uh, I know that Felicia's on her way. Um, what else happened this last week? So for those of you in the Discord have seen, Joe is working on uh, his own uh, prop as well. He's building Ashbringer from World of Warcraft and is doing a phenomenal job on that. Uh, we have been recording that whole thing. In fact, uh, he spent two days uh, recording this week which, which pushed back me getting some of the Rebel Helmet finished. Um, 
so we've got a ton of footage of him building that. So there's going to be, be a Odin Makes episode that is uh, pretty much strictly Joe doing the building. Uh, but we talked about it. I'll still narrate the video. I'll still introduce the video. I, I think there's a couple of times when I've walked in and, 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 and talked to Joe during the build. And I'll still be there for the outro. So it'll still be my voice. So it'll still have that kind of a feel. But it's definitely Joe doing all the work. And, and you know, and this is how Joe makes. But um, trying to give something something else a try, right? Trying to see, trying to make sure that uh, the, the channel has the ability to to do its thing, that it has the ability to grow from where it's at. Uh, not, not that I'm going anywhere, but um, the concern was, what happens if I get sick? Especially after last year, right? What happens if I get sick? What happens if I can't make an episode? Because right now I am, I need an episode next week, I'm building it this week. And then next week I'm building the, the episode for the week after that. I have nothing pre-made because I'm just not working hard enough to get that, that far ahead. So, uh, and, and it is my opinion and my goal to have a video every single week at 10 a.m. on Wednesday because um, that's what I wanted to do. And the other big channels that I've talked to and the other uh, people who I trust have all told me that putting out a video on a regular basis at a regular time is the best way to make the algorithm happy and to make viewers happy because you're consistent. So that's what I've been doing. Toby's here. <laughs> that means Felicia's here. So this is awesome. Hey, Toby. Hey, how's it going? Hi, doing well. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. Gonna put my stuff down and go get a cup of coffee and I'll be right back. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely get yourself some coffee. I've, I've had tea so far today. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, Detlef P says, good evening. Good evening to you. Top of the morning. <laughs> Top of the morning. I'm still not awake yet. <laughs> Felicia says, she's still not awake yet. I'll be changing over microphones as well, so we'll be able to have more of the open mic for both of us, because I'm just wearing my normal video microphone. I was the only one here. Uh, Trash Panda, collaboration, yes, thank you. Uh, Toothpick19, Odin, what's up, my man? Uh, right, I'm rereading what I just read. Uh, Ed Vixen says, no, I'm not that good looking. Okay, well, Car Epic Cardboard Pops is a pretty cool channel. I have no problem doing a collaboration with them. Hey, 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 We got another trade. So unlike the last couple of weeks where, for some, it remembered, I'm the right size. Unlike the last couple of weeks where uh, there's been no Sunday trains, I'm now on five trains since I got down here in, in the studio at like 8 a.m. Um, and there's been one every 15 minutes for the past hour. So that's kind of fun, you know, sort of, for those of us that care about such a thing. So uh, here's our second train cam for the day. Yay, Felicia, now we can get the party started. Right, no more of this boring guy. <laughs> Toothpick Night Team says, train cam is amazing. Thank you, Toothpick. So I didn't see any other real questions that were coming up this week uh, within, within the, the Discord chat, which, by the way, for those of you watching who aren't aware, uh, my patrons have a private Discord where we talk about random things. We talk about the different projects we're working on. Uh, there's a build chat that happens most every week. Uh, they're trying to set up a game night. I don't know if that's happened yet. Um, I tried to do a, uh, uh, an Among Us game and then I got busy and missed it, but I think one happened anyway without me, which is pretty cool. So we've got an active Discord server with a bunch of different people talking, including Felicia and Joe. They're all on there. Uh, and so on the Discord, you guys are able to send me questions beforehand for the Sunday's live stream, if you want. I think at this point, you're all pretty good, but you know, if you want, that's there. So if you want to be part of the Discord, if you want to be part of the hour pre-show, if you want to be part of interesting things that happened with it, with, uh, throughout the rest of the week, definitely go to patreon.com slash odinmakes and check out how to get, get there. And once you're in, you're in. So I'd love to see you there. And remember, the Patreons seriously are what makes the show happen. Uh, there's, there's, there's... <laughs> Hey, Bruno's here too. There's a, there's a number of costs that go along with doing this show. And uh, so I really do appreciate uh, all of you guys and what you do with, with your generosity with making this happen. Hello. Train. Train. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. 
double check that that mic Now I'm at the grown-up's table. Now you're at the grown-up's table. <laughs> I need my booster seat. Right. Oh, here's Toby. Oh, there's Toby. He let himself in. How nice. Oh, yeah. No, he's such a bulldozer. Bruno! Oh, wait. No, inside. And Bruno ran out. <laughs> So I don't have the, uh, nobody was here, so I didn't set up the dog cam. I got all the cameras set up for doing uh, projects on the table. Uh, Vatic17, as the resident Dragon Ball fanatic, I'll have some questions for you too. Oh, okay. Uh-oh, we're in uh -oh, trouble. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. Yeah. So I saw the local comic shop, Comics and Collectibles. They're actually on, um, uh, was it Freeport Boulevard? Fruit, Fruit, Fruit Ridge and Freeport, basically? Oh, yeah. Right around there? They have, they got a new shipment of gun, Gunpla, Gundam models in, including the Cup of Noodles, the Instant Ramen <laughs> Gundam kit. I mean, it's not Gundam, I don't think, specifically, but it is a snap-together model kit of a Cup of Noodles. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I watched Naruto for the very first time. Okay. I know my brother used to look like him, but, you know. Right. We were kids. We didn't watch the same shows all the time. Sure. But anyways... Yeah, it is very much a eat ramen show. Yeah, that's way more of an eat ramen Cup show. Cup of noodles is very Dragon Ball. <laughs> and my friend is now into dumplings and puka, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> and yes, every time I watch puka, I want to eat dumplings. Some dim sum sounds delicious. So. Dim sum does sound delicious. Anyways. Anyways. We're going to be cutting foam today. We will be cutting foam today. We will be cutting foam today. We're going to be... We have to get all that stuff set up. Pretty much. Like, grab, I grab the... You know, grab the pattern. Various pattern sizes. Uh, this was the last one we did. I'm pretty sure we kept this one separate. No, I know. I'm just thinking we printed it out in small, medium, and large. Yeah, <laughs> that basically we might we as did. well like small, medium. We could, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's good to know that it's about 20 to 25 percent reduction to go to children's sizes. <laughs> right. From his original pattern. From his original pattern. So if you want a small, go 15. You know, like, wait, what was it? It was 15 for this one. This is 20. Full set. Full. 15, 20. Or how did we do Whatever. it? Whichever. This is the full. It's the three different sizes. It doesn't yeah. really matter if you're pointing at the right one. <laughs> yeah. Small, medium, and large. Yeah. And I think they very much are small, medium, and large. Right. With wiggle room. Yeah. So. Yay! Yay! It was a lot of paper and a lot of patterning, but we yeah. figured it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are people saying? What are people saying? Uh, people are screaming train, which is, you know, fun because. Yeah. We had a train. Uh, I've had five trains so far this morning, since eight. Oh, it's been very productive. Yeah, it's Sunday. been very training for the past, in fact, we've had uh, one every 15 minutes for the past hour, so that was the second train of the day. <laughs> okay. The stream started with one. Nice. Uh, what's happening here? We've got, um, is Ish wearing the coloring book jumpsuit? Oh, no. <laughs> I was wondering if you're going to wear the coloring book jumpsuit. No, I made three of those this week. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that fabric, I was like, you know, that would make a really good jumpsuit, but I don't want to mess it up by cutting it up and turning it into a jumpsuit that doesn't fit. So then I did it out of a black cotton. I was like, wow, this is super comfortable. <laughs> but I had to make a few adjustments. So then okay. I made it out of, because I had a lot of that black cotton, another right. one out of that black cotton with all the adjustments. I was like, wow, this is even more comfortable. But then I didn't go straight to that fabric. I went to this rainbow fabric and played with lines. Anyways, okay. that one turned out great. And then I went to the coloring book one. And its stretch was slightly different oh. than the fabrics that I had. It had stretch widthwise, but it didn't have a, a lengthwise stretch. So it changed it by about two and a half inches. Okay. <laughs> and it's like... So... <laughs> It'll still stretch around your thigh and stuff, but it won't stretch over the bend of your knee type of a thing. It still bend just goes around the bend of the knee. It's just yeah. the, um, when you do a pair of pants or a jumpsuit, the crotch depth matters, especially when you do a jumpsuit, because if you shrug your shoulders, everything goes up right. and down. And I had it all figured out, but that stretch factor, so I just got to add a little belt to it. Oh, okay. Add a little, like... <laughs> just a little belt to it. Just a little belt to it. Or I could add it in the sleeve. There's a lot of places I could add it to, but I didn't factor in the stretch factor. Okay. That was my fourth one. Four. Fourth. Fourth. But <coughs> wow. I did... That pattern turned out great. I Good. really like it. Good. And I now have jumpsuits for the whole entire summer. Uh, yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Detlef P says, I'm working for a train company. Always interesting... To to see trains from other countries. Yes. I actually feel the same way. 
Is it the train that's from that different country, or is it just the shipping containers that have been put on trains? Uh, no, the trains actually appear different. Uh, oh, different yeah, countries. because they have different standards, and they so have, you have, have different some, yeah. trains. Okay, that makes sense. And I, we have more than just people here seeing that. Okay. Exactly. As Let well as uh, the way the couple wings work, and uh, I believe a lot of the European trains actually have a, a bit of a bumper. There's, there's a couple around like mushroom bumpers. You'll think about the Lego trains because they're, they're patterned after uh, European trains. Okay. Sometimes and, I just thought it was as technology progressed and who bought the newest model. Oh, okay. But, Fair enough. Yeah. Although I'm aware that the European trains aren't connected with little round magnets. Yeah, I understand that. But, you know, the, the rest of the design, it kind of looks a little different. That's okay. <laughs> I get most of my train information from Thomas the Train anyways. There so you go. <laughs> Sunday's our training. Oh, hey, Lee's in here. Hello, Lee. Morning to both of you. Hello, Geek Pride Lee. Hi, Lee. <clears throat> um, have you guys tried the Yuhang restaurant on Truxel? Their dim sum is amazing. No, I have not. I've no, done I more kind of locally. There's this place that was around the corner from Smosh that Felicia and I would go to. That right. Was, it was my favorite. And then they're down the street from that if you wanted to um, actually sit down and have the ladies with the carts pushing things around. Okay. And the tables with the spinny things. Oh, that place was so good. <laughs> so good down the street. So it's like I didn't really have to leave my bubble to get really good dim sum. Awesome. So, I don't know. But no, I have not tried there because I have not left my bubble. Fair enough. <laughs> but I'm willing to. I tried it in San Francisco a few times. But yep. I don't know where I was. I, I know I've had dim sum at Fats. Um never had that there. Okay, I can't, can't figure necessarily where else. Oh, okay. That's is amazing. Yes. I absolutely love their honey walnut shrimp. Right. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Sunday where we talk about food. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I've, I've costumed the um, owner of Fats a few times at the oh. costume shop. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, cool. I don't know. Random. The people you meet. Right. <laughs> working at a costume shop. Oh, hi, Bruno. Okay. Come say hi. Um, Jerry Rick Props is saying that the trains kind of suck in Ireland. Uh, sorry? <laughs> what did I spill on my shirt? That smells yummy. Be lunch. Lunch or breakfast or, I don't know. What's on your shirt today, Odin? Dog snot. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Contact cement. Wow, that's a big thing of it. Yes. I need some. Uh, nope, you won't be. Will Connors just bought himself a gallon of contact cement. That's exactly the way I buy it, Will. <laughs> How fast do you go through it? Did I date this one? I might not have dated this one. About six months, I think. About six months? About six months for and a gallon And you're doing a project a week? Yeah. Then about how much... I assume you use one little container per project, you know, like use it up. No, no. Uh, it depends on the project, you know. Uh, I use up a lot more on some, um, you know. The more seams you have, the more contact is spent. Right, the, so the more So necessarily area. if it's a bigger project doesn't mean it's necessarily going to use up as much, but sometimes you might be right. surprised. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah. There you go. Laying down is great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to get down, Bruno? <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Will, for making sure your, your contact cement says buckled in safe on the seat. On the seat. Sorry you guys are watching the last train. You can't see it, but it's, it's a gallon of contact cement that is now safely belt buckled into the car. Yeah, safety as, first. As apparently Will is watching the live stream on his phone while he's driving because <laughs> safety first. <laughs> I, I was assuming he just got into the car, so. Yeah, yeah it's true. You might not be driving safety yet. Safety third. First, I mean. Safety third. All right, Bruno. He's Bruno, bye. <clears throat> well, he says love fast downtown, but not a fan of their dim sum, so i got to go to this place in Truxel. Okay. Eventually. When things, well, things are starting. They're starting slowly. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Starius says the stretch factor. Now I forgot. Coming soon to a garment near you. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of things that you have to factor in. <laughs> Just tell me about it. Oh, like... I looked on the Discord. Yes. And your friend that is making that really cool Obi Wan suit. Uh huh. Darren. Darren. He was talking about interfacing. Right. And I have a rant about interfacing. Ooh. And welcome to Sunday's rant, starring Felicia. And this week's subject is. Don't buy that shit that they tell you is interfacing. 
working at the store, it's not, and it sucks. Unless you're do, it works for other things, but it's not interfacing. Okay. <laughs> so, and there you go. <laughs> no. I, I was telling you the other day that you can right. add up properties of fabrics to get the fabric that you want. You know, this fabric isn't very strong, but it has the right outer look or right. blah, blah. Or, this fabric's gonna support and yeah, which is what you just said. This one's gonna breathe, this one's not. There's like lots this of things. This one's flame retardant. <laughs> yeah, so you can add up your layers of fabrics. You can do an interfacing, interlinings, you can do linings, you can do outer facing. So you can have like 12 different fabrics mm -hmm. in a garment that you don't even notice. Like you can use organza. is a really good interfacing. Okay. Because it's really, it has a good structure that's, um, weave is tight and it'll give you really good support but you can also hide it under something so delicate as lace. Oh, interesting. So, you know, like you can hide it. Which I'm sure lace needs an interfacing or something. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Okay. depends. Oh, you know, it, it, tool, you, it depends on what, there are so many things you could do with different materials. <laughs> I'll let you finish some interrupting. <laughs> no, I know. Organza. But I'm just, organza, but I would use a muslin or a self fabric. You don't have to go out and buy a specific fusible, non-woven interfacing and then iron it to the thing and have this thing that just sticks, not laying right, always just kind of bulky and why is that there? None of my garments that I wear have that. Right. There's a reason because just that stuff is not for interfacing people. Just use self fabric, muslin, organza, you know, just something that just. So I'm not fully. You're, you're giving us names. Uh, organza, you know, the first one you said, self fabric? Self fabric. So self. whichever fabric you're using as the outside fabric, uh -huh. so the fabric that you're using to make your shirt with, right? You can just cut out a piece of it, extra piece of it, and use it as a facing. Oh, okay. So you can layer so it. So self as an, as an itself. Okay. Self fabric as in the. The, what we used to call it fashion fabric, the fashion fabric on outside, the okay. lining, the inner, you know, like, you know, I feel like I'm taking a test in school. <laughs> no, know, no, it's fine. Like, but yeah, no, that's the, you can use the self fabric, which is the fabric that you're using for the whole project or the, okay. the thing. And you can also use just a piece of muslin. Muslin is just that white, um, basic, you know, raw material fabric uh -huh. that is just cotton, no dye, no nothing. And that's way cheaper than interfacing. Right. And I know, but it's fusible. Aren't you supposed to? No, you can just stitch it on or use it, treat it as if it's part of the original outside fabric. Okay. So um, if you want to get like a stiffer collar, you can just use a stiffer fabric on the inside underneath your nice, soft, flowy satin outside. Okay. Because, you know, a satin lapel isn't all satin. It's no. satin on the outside. Right. With a stiffer cotton muslin probably a heavy, heavy twill weave underneath right. it right i've seen yeah the to other support side of... it so like you can layer things up to get them what you want but if you're already past that point you're not going to add an interfacing inner lining and you want kind of some structure and support you can slip in a piece of cardboard okay <laughs> <laughs> shoulder pad a little shoulder pad you know you can do other things you can also add a sizing and sizing is a fancy term for spray starch Oh, okay. Really? You ever get a, a garment? A piece On of occasion, I buy garments. Yeah, a piece of clothing home, a t-shirt, pair of pants, and you wear them, and they're kind of crunchy, but they look really nice that first time you wear them, and then you wash them, and then they're droopy, right. and they're just not as crisp as they used to be. It's because they added sizing onto the outside of the fabric so that it would present itself the best. At the store. At the store. Keep that pressed. They go through the effort to iron it. They want to keep it in there, so right. spray starch. Okay. And that's called sizing? Sizing. Terminology. Terminology. So you can add sizing to your fabric to change its properties. So if you if you want to really stiffen a fabric, you can by chance soak it in glue and let it, you know, like dry and you can like make ghosts and tables. Hey, excuse me. You know, like kind of things, but in a little more gentle, natural, not so stiff um, starch. Like, okay. as simple as buying it from the grocery store starch, but spray starch is easy, dollar store. Starch, iron, it'll give it a crisp look. All right. So, just some advice. Because interfacing sucks. No, the non-fusible... Oh, excuse me. Non-fusible iron-on interfacing they tell you to use in patterns. 
just don't. That's interesting. So non-fusible yet iron on. I would assume that would be fusible. That's, so that's no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so fabrics naturally have a grid to them. There's the fabrics that go in up and down, and there's the fabrics that go side to side. Right. Okay. And that grid kind of gives structure and support, and also a bias so the things wiggle a certain way. Now yeah. instead of having those fibers in a grid structure, you make them all crazy, and you make a felt, and you iron it and press it. Okay. Non-woven. Non-woven or okay. Non-woven. All right. So, a felted. It's a piece of felt, polyester. Right. That they then add glue dots on top of. I've seen that. That you then iron to your fabric, so it makes so they stick together and act as one piece. Okay. Which is great in theory, and I love it for certain applications. Like that material is amazing when you want to make something out of paper. Like okay. I've made. A paper corset before and I used that stuff and it was perfect it made the paper turn into the properties of the non-woven fabric and by ironing it because you can iron paper you can iron right. it made my anyways it was perfect for that job but for an interfacing inner lining and all that kind of other stuff all right <laughs> just sew in a piece of fabric like just two two pieces of fabric you know just I had um, my very first sewing, college sewing teacher, she, she went off on that, you know, and I was like, okay, whatever, but then I... <laughs> then you lived it and you, and you understood. She makes so much sense now. <laughs> so much sense. You, your, your professor wasn't just making stuff up? <laughs> no, she knew what she was talking about. And I'm glad that she presented me with other solutions as opposed to just leaving me going, why is this never, why doesn't this work? Why yeah. is this so frustrating? Right. Because that's not the way you do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, anyways. Anyway. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. All right. All right. <laughs> um, art man, what brand are you painting the armor with? It'll probably be Flat FX Paints. The um, stuff you have? The stuff I have, right. I'm, yeah. I've, I've got flex paint too, but um, whichever. Uh, Lee is asking a question for Felicia. Have you ever made outfits for puppets? Oh, yes. Let me back to this. And uh, looking for a replica Muppet Christmas Carol outfit from a Gonzo replica, and I can't find anything close. This is the Christmas Carol, right. Well, buy children's clothing. Because <laughs> puppets are about the size of toddlers. Okay. Um, when we did Ian and Anthony as puppets, right. I went shopping at Toys R Us Kids, Babies R Us. Right, right. And in their baby section, they had the cutest little tiny versions of adult clothes. Yep. That are adorable. So he, I believe, if I remember right, it's a, some kind of Dickens look, which would be like mm -hmm. a... It's, it's a top hat and a coat and a scarf, as far as I can remember. Well, I was sourcing children-sized burgundies Willy Wonka jackets, which are burgundy velvet things, right. and they exist. So I would okay. start with looking at children-sized clothing. Okay. <laughs> is where I would tr go first. Also, dolls' clothing, too. And think outside of this specific character. Think, I, I need a velvet... <laughs> Jacket. I need a ascot. I need a vest, or I need a shirt, or you know what I mean. Okay. And yeah, so that's my advice. Good luck on your hunt, and you can always add lace to things. I'm, I'm just good. imagining because we always would take like suit jackets and add little lace, right? <laughs> bracelets, I guess you could say. Right. And it instantly took it to 1700s or pirate or you know what I mean yeah totally character right I've done that <laughs> so, you know thinking outside the box uh, trash man is this company that sounds like Bruno doesn't like interlacing either interfacing interfacing he might have said interlacing but interlacing he, no he's is... interfacing I read it wrong okay interlacing <laughs> is not interfacing no interlacing is a video thing that's why I said it, because that's what I'm used to. No, it's okay. <laughs> Actually, interlacing isn't even a video thing anymore. It's an old video thing. <laughs> I just read on Reddit that um, when they have a glitch, that's an old Yiddish term that they used with the radios. Yes. And then it transferred into communication and... And standard, yeah. So now a glitch is an old word, Yiddish word for glitch. Anyways, I liked it. I thought yeah. it was interesting, because you didn't realize that it was a non-technical... Right. Term when it sounds so technical. <laughs> right. That's what I'm used to it being. I saw. I saw the same post. Totally yeah. agree. 
I'm imagining an old lady, you know, in the future Matrix going, you guys have bitch. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Jerry and Props uh, said that he super glued in his T visor crooked into, I assume, his Mando helmet. Uh, so he's asking for any any idea on how to unglue it without cutting the foam or scratching the visor. I believe super glue hey. can be uh, uh, solvent with mineral spirits. I yeah. think it is. They which have we can different try. solvents that they used with the Gorilla Glue lady. The right. Lady. They used mineral oil, baby oil, and they research what was in that compound and found that anti-glue. <laughs> found the anti-glue that isn't in the dangerous yeah. for your liver compound? Yeah, so it's exist it exists. It exists. It exists, but I wouldn't... Where would you start? Because you also want it to be able to glue back on, so you don't want to damage it. Right, well the mineral spirits I don't think will damage the visor. Well, they soak into the, the, the <coughs> foam, like a sponge, and then make it harder to glue together. Another train. Today is train day. <laughs> Massive train day. <laughs> oh, that was a short one. <laughs> train. <laughs> train. <laughs> um, I haven't tried putting mineral spirits in the foam. I would assume it wouldn't hurt it. Uh, the foam, EVA foam is pretty chemical resistant. Okay, so just from the worst experience. Right. We had to glue beard onto Anthony. Right. Had to remove it, had to put it back on, had to remove it. it, and the stuff that removed it made it difficult to put it back, back on. on. Uh -huh. Your face is a sponge, you know, everything it's kind a, of is right. a sponge, and I'm like, foam is a sponge. It is. So if you, if you get the mineral oil, is it going to damage your sure. sponge? I don't know. Okay, well, <laughs> do a test section. Right. That's what I would recommend in that case. Just, yeah. <sighs> so. so. Well, cool. <sighs> We're awake. No, really. <laughs> I'm halfway through my cup of coffee, so there's that. <laughs> Odin now needs a microscope cam so we can look at fabric under uh I do have one of those little magnifiers with the, the grid so you can see how many fibers per inch. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. It makes a difference. Well, On sheets, go for a thousand fibers and not microfibers, those don't count. Anyways. Okay. Microfibers, you can get a lot more fibers per inch, but they're they don't they're not cotton. Go right. Co you need real cotton, not cotton like. They love to stick that like in there. Of course they do. So cotton like. <laughs> but yes, it makes a difference and it makes sheets so much more comfortable. Right. And wear better and feel better and wash better and smell better. And be better. And that's the littlest thing. <laughs> you know, fabrics. Right, right, right. I can geek out on those all day, apparently. Apparently. Deesh, have you turned away from duct tape coffee? No, I just got here late and haven't <laughs> creeped everything yet. <laughs> and I'd rather drink it than tape it at the moment, <laughs> to tell you the honest truth. <laughs> Earthquake! Oh no, Earthquake. just dogs! Oh! <laughs> yeah, just dogs. They knocked it. Did they knock it again? Well, apparently a little bit of them. Uh, Is that another? I, I feel like I'm hearing mystery trains, but no. No, there's, um... Something is running in the background, and I don't know if it's a, uh, a semi-truck or if it's someone's AC, but there is definitely a, uh, a noise. Okay. And it's been going for hours. I looked outside a couple of times. I can't tell yeah. what it is. But I think the building next door has a truck and they're unloading. Okay. I think. All right. I'm thinking as a sound person now. I right. never do that. I try not to. It gets very hard to exist as a sound person because you hear everything. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. Oh, you've already got the kind of first toy going. <laughs> Let's not knock that over. All right. <laughs> oh, do we? <laughs> I I failed to get uh, chew toys for them, so. <sighs> so let's see. This guy here, train cam is four. If you go to one, no train cam, train cam is one. If you go to four, it's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, it takes a little bit of time. So, so. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> this looks so tiny. It does. Oh, do you do we want the and this is Not yet. Oh, no, okay. No, because I think we have.
have to get it all cut out first. And we already tried on, we know these fit. We know these fit. Took a right. while, but now we know these ones are going to work. But. <laughs> I'm sorry that I've got something on the front of my shirt you think smells great. He's like, I'll help you clean it. I'm going to have to change nice. shirts just so you'll keep your nose out of my shirt. <clears throat> I hid under your porch because I love oh, you. Yeah, right. <laughs> ah, yes, Bruno, but I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> right, right, right. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> I love how he's the cutest little dimples, the little swirlies right on his booty. It's adorable. Mm. That tail looks lethal. Ah. Yeah, to my coffee. That's why I have to hold it, huh? Right. <laughs> All right, you ready to go down? Vladefx17 is asking what prop telescope should they build? What, hmm, what prop telescope? There's, but Jack Skellington's got one. Uh, trying to think of all the animated ones where they like look around and have a big eye that pops out the end. Uh, Del of P, one of my cats is watching Bruno. Tail's definitely a hazard. Another hazard is uh, being brain dead on camera. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> know why I have no all right well let's see I will grab we got a little bit of six mil foam here I think anything else I think else really happened this week I think I've talked through most of that stuff that's coming up uh, it's unfortunate that this year my uh, it's not unfortunate, but May the 4th is the day before my normal video day, so my Rebel Star Wars build is going to come out on May the 6th, so, eh, that's fine. That really isn't a thing, anyway. Oh, yeah, that'll totally fit. Okay, we'll need a little more than just this one piece, but... Make a smelloscope from Futurama. Right. That could be fun. <laughs> the thing longer. How many sheets do we have over here? Oh. Bruno's not coming back. Okay. So. This is why we can't have nice streams. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice streams. Yes. Toby's trying to get him to come over here. Toby's trying to herd. <laughs> He's trying to herd, but you know, it's right. like herding Bruno's. For sure. <laughs> okay. They're talking about what telescopes to make and uh Odin, it's this is the May show. And this is this is the May now. <laughs> it is May. It's been it May for a whole did, day. Did I not say May? <laughs> I don't know. Right. It's been May for two days, apparently. <laughs> But that means that a certain holiday is coming up. Yes, a certain holiday is coming up. May the 4th, that's what I was talking about. It was May the 4th, and then my video will actually be out on May the 6th. Because <laughs> it's more important it happens on Wednesday, huh? Yes. Well, it's one thing that, that um, a lot of the people who, that were doing Smosh mm -hmm. said that it was very important to put a video out every week and put a video out at the same time every week. Yeah, and and it's okay to move it, but you you let them know, and you don't move it around. It moves, and then you're there for a while, and so I, that's why I've really stuck with Wednesday because it's Odin's day. It's a rough translation, right? So yes, everybody in the comments, you guys are right. He chooses Wednesday. Ah, uh -huh, I absolutely choose Wednesday on purpose, and 10 a.m. because why not? <laughs> we need deadlines, right? Yeah, we need deadlines. Uh, 10 a.m. was always when DIY prop shop. Well, when I first was doing DIY Prop Shop, that's when they would release, was 10 a.m. So it's like, all right, fine. Got in those habits. Yeah. Keep them. Yes. You know, they work, they work. No no reason not to. So that has always been my release date, even when I wasn't doing it every single week. And the few times I put a video out not on that on that day, the noise stopped. The I think few, they're unloaded. <laughs> I think they are unloaded. And they are unloaded. Um, with the few times I put a video out not at that time, not on that day, it kind of died on the vibe. 
you know, I had, I've had a few advertisers that insist, no, I must release it on Saturday at such and such time. It's like, all right, it's going to get buried. Oh, look, it got buried. Can I have my check, please? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. It was more important about consistency than yeah. volume. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. advice for y'all. So, May the 5th, Cinco de Mayo for us, where we pretend like we're celebrating a, uh, a holiday that doesn't exist. Tequila. <laughs> Tequila. Tequila day. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> My calendar work actually has Star Wars Day printed on May the 4th. So I guess it's a real holiday now. All right, Starius, sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's yeah. definitely on calendars now. It's definitely on calendars now, absolutely. All right, so I, I, one of the things... Yeah? Go for it. No, 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 no. I was like, I have to go get them. I totally just didn't. <laughs> you hear them? <laughs> Let's, uh... They're not on the train cam. No, they're on the train cam, so I'm going to look uh, on the computer here, and I'll look oh, at Oh, you're going to the... spy on them. I love it. So... You two are the only ones parked in the parking lot. In fact, the two people that are usually in the back aren't in the back right now. We're the only ones here. Oh. So them barking isn't going to bother anyone. <laughs> awesome. Then yeah. I will not stress out about it. Do not stress out about it. Okay. So they can run around like little wild they animals that like they are. Wild animals they are. Okay. <laughs> so Vadix in, in Discord chat. And I assume, since it says you too, it's asking us, not yes. everyone else on Discord. Ignore the design that's on the table. So mm -hmm. let's let's not pretend that this, you know, which shoulder style do we prefer on the Dragon Ball Z armor? Oh, I love his giant eggshells. His giant eggshells, the... <laughs> right. Well, You know, you have to be pretty bold to pull off those shoulder pads, I'm just saying. Pretty much. <laughs> but... But, um... Whether it's like the tank or the tank straps. Right. Let's save an image. Um, I think I like the full, fuller shoulder personally on me, but I like the yellow detail as um, funner to make, if that makes sense. Funner and I know make. funner is not a word. But, funner is totally a word. But, yes. Visually, I would like the one with the full shoulders, but with I the think the thing. yellow is more interesting visually. Where's DBZ now? Are you trying to share? Yeah, I downloaded it, but I already forgot what it's called because I, I just don't. I've got no. There is vests. I've got no uh, brain power this morning at all. Yeah, I got here late, so. <laughs> no. no, it's totally not your fault. I don't have brain power. I just don't have brain power. I'm I mean, just saying I'm not there either. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yes, like. Uh... Yeah, we'll, we'll both be doing really good about two. <laughs> you want to share it still? Yeah, we can go ahead and share it still. So, um, sorry, it took a minute. Hopefully, the image went up. So this is what we're being shared. What was being shared on Discord as to which shoulder? Which ones do you guys like? Which one do you guys like? Uh, yeah, actually, I can agree. I think I like the top one, but I can totally get why the bottom one is going to be a lot easier to make. I didn't say easier, more interesting. Interesting. Visually okay. interesting. More visually interesting. You think the bottom one is more visually interesting? Yes, I think the top one I would prefer to wear myself. Right. But I think the bottom one is more visually interesting. Okay is more interesting to build. And it's probably a lot easier for... Adjustments. Adjustments and sizing for anyone. Yeah. Because the top one, you're going to need You'd actually to... need a bodice pattern that would fit specifically your shoulder to shoulder and your... Sh yeah. Yeah. Where that one, you could get away with a lot of wiggle room and some... Yeah. It's just straps. Yeah. So, yes, the bottom is easier, but it's also, I think, visually more interesting, but I would prefer the top one. I... I concur. <laughs> <laughs> Opinions all day long, apparently. <laughs> now, would you use interfacing on Dragon Ball Z armor? Well, <laughs> would you, you use interlacing on Dragon Ball Z armor? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I wouldn't see a need to. No. Because we're building it out of foam, and we don't need to change the outside of it. No. Nope. And we don't really need to line it with anything because he's wearing it. So no. No. Nope. <laughs> There's no reason to add it unless we were using a different material then foam itself to build it out of. Right. If we were doing it out of cardboard or plastic or thing, then yes, I would probably give it an outer, the, mm -hmm. the stiffer fabric would be my interfacing and I would give it an outer kind of a shell thing, but the way we're doing it, no. No. Cool. <laughs> Long-winded enough, right? Long-winded, it's all right. I pushed that button again. <laughs> I have opinions there, <laughs> that's for sure. 
Oh, that's a different noise. That's their friends. They they're trying to say hi to you. I'm just going to. Yeah, they're. Sorry, I'm checking the camera to make sure the dogs are being okay, and the dogs are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We got the other dog. Toby and Bruno are, got the other dog super excited, and the other dogs are now playing dog dominance games. Uh, so it looks like Toby and Bruno lost their upside privileges. Yes. Yeah, they, they, she was from outside. She's saying it's their girlfriends that were fighting. See, the other two dogs are, are, are female. These two are male. Yeah, the two were, they were. And they're on the other side of the fence, and it's nothing I can do to break them up. They were just watching. Right. And I think Bruno was rooting them on. They, yeah. <laughs> totally, yeah. Yes. So hopefully those two are okay. They, <laughs> they did not. Right. Yeah, I hope they're fine. I hope they're fine. <laughs> I may go out there with the hose later. <laughs> Anyways, Hi. Good morning. Afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, Trash Panda is letting us know that May 5th is free burrito day at our local rest restaurants. I know Chipotle's done that in the past. I don't... I don't know if I trust a free burrito. No, <laughs> Jesus. It's probably actually not that bad. Uh... Yeah. But I definitely show up to free um, Slurpee Day. Yes. That's uh, July 11th. Yeah. Oh, you know it. 7-Eleven, <laughs> right? <laughs> holiday, it apparently. Sir, saying they want a smell scope I'll have to, look, have to check on that. I can't remember how big the smell scope is. What are you is. trying to sniff? Um, well, they're talking about making what, what prop telescope. And, oh, okay, uh, and okay. The, and the smell scope was Farnsworth. His, his, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are you <laughs> it has nothing to do with dogs. It has nothing to do with free burritos. Nothing to do with any of that. It's a totally different subject. <laughs> okay. Okay, easy. <laughs> Oh, I'd have to see a picture of it, but... Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I was not picturing that when you said that, and I was like, oh, wait, yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> let's see, let's... Then I was just like, what are you guys trying to sniff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. So we have five minutes before we let... We have five minutes before we let everyone else into this exciting, riveting... No, actually, I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Before we have to be finished setting up so we can actually get building the project... Right, even though um, yeah. everyone's going to see this pre-show stuff. No, I know. <laughs> the setting up, the, the whole up. how we're really never, ever prepared. Anyways. Well, that's the whole point. Yes, exactly. Show up and we craft and eventually something gets done, right? Right. Yeah, so we need to get foam for this. Yep. Are you using well, I've that? Got, I've got this. Uh, this is some six mil. I was still thinking about using six millimeter as the basic. Yeah. Uh, basic piece, and there's enough here. This is the what he originally uses on his pattern, or did we scale down? I'm scaling down. Okay. So thank this you. is this is uh, the six millimeter is what he used for his details, and he used ten millimeter, which is a full centimeter, so it's almost twice as thick as this. Is what he used for his base. Okay. And I thought if we're scaling it down as much as we have, we keep, might as well scale. We might as well scale down the thickness. Which makes too. a lot of sense because if we didn't, it might actually be bulletproof. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so we're, we're switching it down to six millimeter, and then what are we using for the stripes? Four, four, four millimeter, and I've got some of that. It's over on the wall. It's over on the wall. The wall of stuff. Mm-hmm. Right there. Right there, yeah. So it looks like we can get... Almost all the pattern pieces, and you don't have to worry about stupid grain lines. There's no grain lines so with foam. So you can do That's it any way. Any, however, know. yes. You know, things you got to appreciate. After I'm done knitting or crocheting a project... I appreciate sewing because you don't have to make the fabric from the ground up. Right. After doing lines and grain lines, I'm like, geez, I love this. You don't have to. <laughs> just maximize your your your, your fabric cuts. usage. Yes. I have a full full uh, another roll of this. So no, I know, but it. still, yeah. it's just it's like, oh look, you can really fit them on there, can't you? Yeah, well, a lot of them, yeah, and, and yeah, we can right up to the edge because we're we're yeah. There's no grain all. lines. No, there's no grain lines. There's no selvage. There's no that one doesn't uh, fit. But yes, you can get at least. That's yeah. very well utilized. Well, we need two of these, so we can probably do one and the other. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yay! Yay! I'll go get the other foam. Does four millimeter? 
Um, four millimeter, yeah. It's a, it's a larger piece, not... Not the small one, pre-cut and already in tiny pieces? Right. I'll probably have to go over and find it. It's not as organized as we'd all like to believe it is. So I'm looking in the wrong spot? Uh, a little more to your left. <laughs> I think it's rolled inside of the red roll or close to it. Not even, not even on the shelf. I'm backing up. <laughs> Is it black? No, it's gray. Okay. Then yes, you're going to have to do it. <laughs> I tried. I thought I could. It's a rat's nest. <laughs> I tried. Hi, Toby. He said, did you say foam? Do I get to chew this? Oh. Where is it? way on the other side. Oh, okay. So I wasn't even close. No. All right. Find the train camera here. <laughs> Jonathan Wiesner says, not being prepared is part of the Oda Makes charm. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad people find that charming and not annoying. <laughs> yes, charming. Charming's a word we'll use. <laughs> charming's a word we'll use. Yes. We are weak humans that are flawed. Aye, that we are. Yes. Yes. I'm going to take this microphone off and turn it off to What's that one say? I'm guessing what you'll wear underneath, but no neck or yes neck. Oh! Does it have the turtleneck or the boat neck for the undersuit? Oh! Which I... ones do you guys prefer? Personally, I like the fit of the ones that have the turtlenecks because they're really crew neck. But... It just depends on which one's easier to find at the store. Yep, I think that's really going to be the biggest factor is where we find the... Oh, not this one. This one. Oh, Amazon has both. Huh. Neck or no neck? Amazon has both? Well, you can easily buy body suits and you can yeah. specify by neckline. Sure. I actually just got a black morph suit for Bubble Scorpion and maybe a Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, we could do either one. And even if we get the... Thing. You can easily cut it off to a boat neck. Right. I think. Hmm. I don't know which one I prefer. They both have, you know, there's the whole tactical turtleneck thing. <laughs> and with this particular cartoon that we're looking at, which, you know, yeah. we're talking about, I haven't seen I know, I'm so staring at something you guys can't even see. <laughs> so give me a second, we'll save image. And then you guys can see what I'm looking at. Save. And then I gotta go over to the control panel and. I'm honestly, honestly leaning towards neck, but I don't hate either option. And you can convince me either way. So give me an argument whether you like it boat neck or turtleneck. Right. Now you're saying boat neck, and, and in this graphic, boat neck is yes neck, and. or no? It's no, the, boat no neck, neck is no neck. So it, there's no. So. Turtleneck has the, oh, I'm still wearing that. Turtleneck has the, um, you do that a little lot, piece actually. of, yeah, I know, because it's easy. Yeah. Um, has the little fabric up there. The boat neck has just from, what I say is like around the collar bo collarbone line from shoulder Very to shoulder. Very similar to what you have on right now. Yeah. This okay. is technically not really a boat neck because there's no sleeves. Oh. But, yes. Fair enough. This is I couldn't tell. <laughs> it's okay. But it's like, wait, yeah, you're right. But, but no. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, boat neck, turtleneck. Okay. So. so there you are. Since that piece doesn't exist yet, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I like the turtleneck. You like turtleneck? I wonder what Joe's going to prefer. I don't know. But we're just going to dress them up. <laughs> Last one. Since this is your build, you have some options, including color. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Here comes another. We're going to save this image. So you could... If you guys are crafting along with us, you got your oh. pattern pieces cut out and ready for foam. We're gonna actually need to. Speaking What's, of that. What? Oh, I need to go. I need to go live. Yeah. Oh, we need to go live. Yeah. Oh, it's twelve o'clock. Could be closed up, Angie. That's oh, come on. Well, we'll ask everybody when they all come and join us. There it is. See which one they prefer: boat neck or turtleneck. It feels like I'm. Calling someone's execution. Edit. And we're going down here. Are we live? To public. Done. And save. And we're super live now? We should be super live now. 
So. But right now, 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 it's going to take a couple minutes for people to show up. It has to, to, to go to space. Up. It has to go to space. Okay. And it has to get someone's attention. <laughs> they have to notice. Yeah. Little, little things. It okay. happens. So, are you going to put up the picture? Uh, can. Oh. So we have no sleeves, we have short sleeves, we have no shirt, and then we have your Napa Speedo. <laughs> you know, I kind of really like the first one. That's some fun. You like the no sleeves? I like the colors. I no. like the no sleeves colors, hot pink, you know. Right. Although, not everybody can pull off an asymmetric look, like number three over there. I don't think I can pull off the number four very well. <laughs> <sighs> well, have you tried? Okay. No. <laughs> you don't know until you've tried. Fair enough. <laughs> I was, um, everything that we had, I was pretty okay with the, the blue jumpsuit because that's, that, that is what I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of No, I colors. really love the variations. So he did it the kind of natural way, you could say, with the real gold. Yes. And then he did it the very cartoony way. Right. But with battle damage, and we're doing it the cartoony way with no battle damage. With no battle damage. Now, which way are you guys going to do it? <laughs> you have lots of options. So what are we talking about? Hello, everyone. Just in case you, you've happened to find the channel and, and realize that this seems like it's midstream. Well, it kind of is. Uh, hello, hello. It's Sunday. It's Sunday afternoon where we're uh, live streaming from. Uh, it's noon for us. Uh, welcome to the Odin Makes live stream. I'm here today live with Felicia. Hi. <laughs> and we're working on Dragon Ball Z armor, and we're specifically working with the Dragon Ball Z armor pattern that SKS Props has developed. And that's a free pattern. Go over to sksprops.com or his YouTube channel. You can download the uh, the pattern. He's also got an excellent um, video on how to do it in like 10 minutes as opposed to watching our long-winded drawn out wait. Exactly. And so we're just going to put it together and not do a, a big step-by-step. -step. You do this, you do that, because... Crash along with us. Steve nailed it. So yeah. crap along with us. And so what we're talking about is when we get the armor done, and what way are we going to do it? We want to do uh, cartoon cell shading without battle damage. Which That's the is... technical way to say, <laughs> I want the cartoon version, but not with the battle. Anyways. <laughs> so it's actually going to be different from the two that Steve has made. So, so we're going to try to make it a little bit different, sort of. Uh, but we're talking about what about the rest of the outfit? Uh, I'm accustomed to seeing the blue jumpsuits. Yeah. Uh, the a lot of my a lot of the patrons on on our Discord we were just talking about having uh, uh, the, the turtleneck, having no neck, and then of course there's a whole bunch of variations that got that got brought up. Yeah. What kind of version are you going to do? Which one? You know, are you going to try and go classic, or do you want to do your own? Yeah. Yeah. Oddly enough, as I think about it, I'm. The blue jumpsuit and with the white armor really makes me think of an X-wing pilot. So that I think is a big problem, big reason. Like, yeah, I'm happy with that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally. Now debate: the boat neck or the turtleneck. Which one do you prefer? Should we go boat neck or turtleneck? Because we have time to order it. We haven't yet. Ben and Lynch, did I make it before the live? You right here. We should be live right now, Ben. We just got live. Ben and Ted animations. Oh, Faker Maker props. Why am I so late? Well, Faker Maker, we just went public, so you may not be late. You might be right here, right on time. I was late. <laughs> but if you wanted to be here in the beginning, uh, the very beginning of all this, when it was all live, <laughs> the first hour that, that we're trying to stream out is also specifically and exclusively for patrons and our Discord. Uh, but you know, we're just setting up. We don't actually do any <laughs> building. Right. We try to save the building for the actual. Uh, public portion of it. William Connors popped in with a twenty dollars super chat for the contact cement fund. Wow! Thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, Savage Cold Train says, "Yo, this channel is so dope." Well, thank you. We haven't even pulled out the contact cement and got high off fumes yet. <laughs> well, there's a reason the Mad Hatter was mad. Yes, and wig makers too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, flip, flipping one out. No, just um, you know, people yeah. who working class. Individuals, you right. know. Back back when uh, job safety was not a thing. Yeah, no. Who would die from the miasma? <laughs> right. 
Ralph said, wow, I just got the notification. Yes, Ralph, you did, because we just went public. Uh, we're, we're now public. Well, no, the, the stream went public. It was a private stream yeah. just for the just for my Discord members and so, patron members beforehand. So now we're all set up and we're going to build as yep. soon as I put him down. As soon as you put him down. Tom Grew says, oh, the dog is so cute. Isn't he? This is Bruno. Yeah. So everyone who doesn't know, the little dog here is Bruno. He's my crazy gypsy dog and I love him. He's a, he's a kind of a vocal guy, so if you ever hear anything, that's him. And there's another dog in, 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 in the studio as well. His name is Toby, and he is the most chill, relaxed studio dog. He's amazing. Yeah. He's the reason Bruno's here, because Bruno won't let me take Toby with me. <laughs> Toby comes everywhere with me, but this guy. This guy. <sighs> Batic17 says, I warned you I was a Dragon Ball fanatic. Yay! I really do like Dragon Ball. I think it's a great show. I love Bulma. She's my favorite. And I'm excited to do this armor. So. Cool. I'm a little nervous because I see you do this all professionally all the time, cutting out the foam, mm -hmm. like at the perfect 45 degree angle. And I'm like, I can barely cut a straight line with a pen. You know, I'm always scissors. That's my tool. I don't think this has any 45 degree angles. I thought when I watched the video, he cut all of these one pieces at this angle so that then when they- They're all straight up and down. Okay. Yeah, from what I remember, they're all cut, you know, like, like the edge here. It's all very straight up and down. That way, when they went together, they, they, they made a continuous seam. I'm or just, appears to. Okay. As opposed to just hacking at it. I thought there was something funny with this piece that, that had to be cut. Uh, no, not that I... No, I have not watched the video in the last week. Okay. But not that I remember. All I remember this piece was that it was cut, it was cut flat, and the piece it goes up against, which is this piece, is also cut flat. Okay, so we don't but, have to stress out about trying to do any crazy angles or no. needing saw blades to cut this out. We can no. literally just comfortably see. Yeah, just comfortably cut it out with, with yes. Okay. And if you and if you want to be super concerned about straight up and down, I've got uh, some cause tool tools that are made to cut straight up and down, both freehand okay. and with a, with a guide rail. All right. That if makes me want. feel a little better because okay. I'm just... But you're asking about this one. The, the funny thing with this one is yeah. that... These two corners needed to glue together in such a way that they were on the same plane, right? But then you actually have to force it so the top corner overlaps. And that gives a little bit of a, a pectoral shape, a little bit of a, the superhero shape to yes. the armor. Yes, I knew there having, was something yeah. tricky that we had to think about for there. Right, but that that's it. Everything else okay, is Okay, so is there's just, no worrying about angles. We can just flat cut foam. Flat cut foam. Okay, so you guys ready? Got your knives out? <laughs> I got more foam. Got more foam. We're not going to run out of that? Is that the four millimeter? No, this is six. six. I was like, that looks a little thick. But that's, that's the four, four back there. Okay. Yes. So, yes. And since we're using SKS Props uh, armor, I'm going to use SKS Props HD foam. There you go. No, this video is not sponsored by SKS Props. I just happen to know Steve. He's a really cool guy, and I like his foam. And he supported your channel for the first two years. Oh, so yeah, he totally thank did. Thank you for that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> I used to steal his foam, so thank you. <laughs> Used to, I mean, um... Used to. <laughs> <laughs> Robert C. jumped into the super chat saying, I just love this show. Robert C., thank you, sir. Well, hi, Robert C. And not to be outdone, Faker Maker Props popped in with a $5 super chat. And Faker Maker is telling us, love the show. You inspired me to make my own YouTube cosplay channel. Oh, right on. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for making videos. Did you make the uh, Loki uh, horns you've got, you've got on your picture there? That's very cool. It's got the new Loki horns for the new show coming up. It's the little ones. It's it's yeah. like the most practical Loki horns they've had yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have just finished God of War and I'm like, ah, oh, look. Anyways. Yeah. Loki. Okay. Anyways, yeah. That so uh, a lot of foams come rolled, not just SKS props foam. Yeah. And uh, in order to get it to relax, generally I just re-roll it the, the, the opposite the way it came rolled. And that helps a lot. It's not permanent, but uh, yeah. it does a lot to get the foam to, to relax. And steam is your friend. And steam is your friend, or just heat. Steam yeah. doesn't have to be steam on foam. Yeah, no, but. I know, but the, I like steam on foam if I'm not trying to warp it or change okay. it. Does that make sense? Like I suppose I haven't worked with steam on foam. Um, so we would have superhero, you know how they have the foam chests yeah. and bus cups and all those things? Right little steam and it comes right back to life all the wrinkles are gone you okay know, like it's it's your best friend for restoring like superman and okay. those like so with like regular foam if you just want it to relax right i like using steam as okay. opposed to trying to put a heat and a you know like 
Right, because a hair dryer, but... Yeah, steam, but okay. steam's gentler. Okay. In a, yeah, but I steam a lot of things. So. I can see steam being gent gentler because steam isn't going to burn. Yeah. Because well, heat And it's more is... dispersed heat. Okay. So it, it's not like putting all the heat in one area. It, it's like steaming the whole... It's just relaxing it, what you're kind of doing. It's a By gentler... Forcing. Right. And then yeah. I, I had built a shelf to put a lot of this stuff on. Yeah. Uh, but the four mil isn't SKS props moments. This is actually from TNT Cosplay. And Ooh, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's a meter wide, so it doesn't fit on my shelf. It doesn't even fit on screen. You see the yeah. the the SKS, the, the HD foam is, is that looks like a yard. 24. No, it's it should, way more. It should be a meter. A meter. A meter. That makes sense. Because the yard's about this long. Here's my meter stick. And this foam should be one meter by two meters when I purchased it. So you can get big sheets of foam from TNT Cosplay. Other people have it too. That's not just them. That's just where I got this one. Like Polyprops, I think, has meter, meter by two meter as well. And Tigs uh, in the UK, I think, has it. Okay. Knives and blades. Knives and blades and pencils. And pencils. You like to trace pencils first. I was just going to trace them. If you want to just cut, uh, you can. But, no, um, I, I'm going to follow you because <laughs> you know what you're doing, and this is your area of expertise, so well, the, I will. The two things that I like to do is uh, cut the paper patterns, and I will take the one, two, three blocks or any other paper weight and uh, hold the paper in place. Because when I just try to hold it as I move around, oh, yeah. my pattern moves. Eh, it's not going to affect it that much. But it bugs me. No, I know. I have those little pattern weights that you get at Joann's that are way overpriced for bean bags, but they work so much better than everything else. So I spent the stupid money and got them. But yeah. Yeah. But these work even better. But yeah. Aren't they expensive paperweights? These are expensive paperweights too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you and, can really and, 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 and these are the the cheap, not really as good as as good one two three machinist blocks because they line up with each other, but not necessarily with anything else, right? Because some of these some of these holes are threaded. And what you want to do with one, two, three blocks, if you're being a machinist or a machine operator, um, you can run a threaded thread through them. Then this, ah, come here. So it's a three eighths coarse thread. Anyway, and this will allow you to to clamp them down to help hold your what you're working with. This looks like the toys that I would have played with when I was a kid, and you oh, like totally, the Tinker toys. Totally Tinker toys. I'm really. And I'm like, I want a whole there. set of these now, but no, <laughs> you got four. But um, darn it! <laughs> we're juggling here. Oh, no, we're, we're not. Juggled. I'm just, I'm just trying to. I'm definitely afraid of dropping one of these on. On, on Toby, but he is over there. Yeah, thankfully. Right? Where is he actually? But anyway. Oh, some of the threaded there. holes line up on some of the blocks, and but the sets don't line up with each other because these are the inexpensive ones. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm making this way more complicated than it needs to be. <laughs> but I don't have a mill. I don't have a lathe. I don't have anything you would actually need a one, two, three block specifically for. I just enjoyed Adam Savage's video on it, especially when he was using them to keep all of his foam cores straight up and down when he's gluing together the models. And there was a point in time when I worked for a high-tech company doing trade shows. We would do foam core models of what the booth was going to be in order to get approval from everybody. And we did a dollhouse scale with uh, six-inch Star Trek figures so they could actually understand what the scale was because they couldn't picture how tall a person was. Um, yeah, no, no. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Non-creative people don't really see the vision and you really have to put it down uh -huh. there. <laughs> and they still won't see it and then it'll finally be in real life and they're like, oh! oh but it's not white. Because it was all foam core, right? Right? No, like every... <laughs> yeah, every damn time. I love it, though, because it's like you have a vision, and you know it, and you know it, and you tell somebody, and they're like... Uh, and then when they see it, they're I've like, oh... I've done it to her. Yeah. <laughs> you get it, where they... Yeah, yeah. You, you try to explain something specific to me. You know, with fabric, you do it like this, you do it like this. And, and I get so caught up with, Wait, but I'm not face. using fabric that... No. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I've done it to you, yes. No, I know. It, it, it happens because when you see a vision and you have to share the vision with others, there's a reason you make mood boards and drawings and illustrations and models and things like that because mm -hmm. it communicates your ideas a little bit better, but it's still... Yeah. <laughs> you can only do so much until they actually see it. And the models also helped us with making sure that we had all the 
space filled up, right? Because you'd start out at, at one inch to one foot, it becomes real easy to figure out your your trade show booth. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you want to build little scale yeah. <laughs> dioramas, basically, right? Right. <laughs> Let's see. We had a lot of... Sean Karg, I think I said this already. Uh, Sean Karg also joined in with Super Chat. Got you a Dragon Ball Z Odin Mix design. Oh, do you? Sean Karg's got me a Dragon Ball Z Odin Mix design. Oh, Ooh. sweet. Oh, I'd love to see that. I talked about it last week. Uh, I'd wear that on a says, Odin, you should make the All Spark. So is this the Michael Bay AllSpark or the animated 1980s AllSpark? Which, yeah, it was Matrix of Leadership. I think it was still called the AllSpark in that movie, too. Because I did make that. It's, it's not too far away, but I did make a... <laughs> Go look up the video. There it is. Right? Is this, is this still not the AllSpark, effectively? I mean, it may have a slightly different name. Is that... Uh, yeah, there it's it is. Blue. It's blue. So, and, you know, and, and it's important for it to work like it does in the movie, right? So if you've got the touch, if you've got the power, it'll actually open up. But gravity's a thing, so the, the center core falls a little bit. <laughs> Magnets are my friend. Wow. <laughs> I like it when they go, hey, can you build this? And you're like, your wish is my command. Da -da! Ta -da! Did it like five years ago. <laughs> five, right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Lost in the Elijah algorithm. Drox 127. Hi, Odin. Love the videos. Keep it up. Thank you. Will do. Uh, control all, control Allard Delete says, How come sometimes you use inches and sometimes you use millimeters in your videos? Because they are units of measurement and we are just using them as units and you often convert from one millimeter to one inch. Yep. Yes. That's, that's usually what I do. Like uh, with the Mechagodzilla toy, it became very easy to, on the toy, one millimeter equals one half inch in my cosplay scale. It just became easy. Yeah, they're just units of measurement. It's math in your head that you can do with visualizing. I know that a millimeter is this big and I know an inch is about this big. Right. right? And a foot's about this big. You know, you just kind of can visualize things after, you know. Yeah, totally. I grew up using the Imperial, you know, whatever, the, the unit of measurements that the USA is still stuck in. Uh, so I can do pretty good at judging those distances, and I'm, I'm just used to them. And I can read a ruler very quickly and go quarter inch, half inch, five eighths inch, and I can convert a lot of those to the decimal equivalents in my head. So I'm just used to it. Um, the you know metric is way easier to use, but I can't go, oh, that's 54 millimeter. I can go, oh, that's two inches, which is about 54 Except millimeters. Except for now you can go, oh, that's four millimeters. That's a six millimeter. You know, I can <laughs> tell because it's units of measurement. You yeah. Know, like, they're just. I can tell how thick the foam is. Right? Right. You, you, you just, it's units. So those are actually inch units. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> it is. You, can, you usually convert one millimeter to one inch. So it is a, right. you take off the ruler and all the information. It's just. It's just this much space. Right. Yeah. So. It's layers of cat toy. So often going from a millimeter to an inch is easy math for him. That's why he does it. Yeah. Less fraction math. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rooster has got a big thing. He's saying, I'm preparing to do a stop motion soon. Ooh, uh, that's Fight fun. between Hanna-Barbera's Godzilla and RX-78 Gundam. Oh, wow. I'm making the Godzilla figure right now. Who do you think will win? Who's it against? Uh, well, the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla against the Gundam. So it's it's it's... Uh, Make a Godzilla versus Godzilla. Well, no, it's it's Flash Godzilla versus uh, Gundam. Gundam, but yeah. So they're their own. Even if you go off of Hanna Barbera's opening song as canon, right? So this is Godzilla scale up from the depths, forty stories tall. Godzilla's gonna win because here comes Gundam, out in from outer space, eight stories tall. <laughs> I don't know. He could tie fire to that shit. He could tie fire to that shit. Yes. <laughs> Okay, if, you get, if Gundam's going to fly in and photon torpedo Godzilla's exhaust port, that's a whole different animation. <laughs> I'm just saying. You okay. can make it interesting. He, he hasn't written it yet. So. Right, he hasn't. <laughs> so who do you think would win? Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, also, it's uh, generally speaking, I'm mm -hmm. sure somebody who's seen a lot more of the, the Heisei movies than I have, or Heisei, have, Heisei right? I'm saying the names wrong. I'm seeing it written down. There's a point in time when mechs have won, but overall, Godzilla has triumphed over mechanoids. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be nature versus um, 
mechanic right. or whatever. Yeah, even you walk speed up on the Empire. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, and don't underestimate the little man, the Hobbit, the right. you know. Uh, right. <laughs> but then again, isn't it like right. also our technology is advanced? <laughs> I mean, she was pretty kick ass, but a waitress beat the Terminator. So yeah. 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 So the underdog. The underdog. Sharp pencils. Sharp pencils. Doesn't matter if you have an eraser or not, you really can't erase in the foam. Right, so just do it right. Pretty much. Uh, Moyer Gaming, it's their birthday. Happy Bur birthday, Moyer Gaming. Happy birthday. Uh, yes, so, we just did that. Odin, please make a Yu-Gi-Oh card holder thing. <laughs> That'd be awesome. You did do the card holder for the magic cards. I did do the card holder for the magic cards. And I did like that. That was a really good design. And card holders aren't that... You only can get this, like, so much, at, even at the hobby stores. So the Yu-Gi-Oh uh, card disc holder is kind of a... No, it's the game board. Oh, the, the arm it's, piece. It's actually an arm piece that, that yeah. Hold, yeah, it's... The, it is still a game board, but it becomes this physical thing you can actually... It's been forever since I've seen that. When I was a little kid. <laughs> you know? Anyway. <laughs> Do I need to mark any of these markings, like? No, um, these markings are just for the strips. Okay, yeah, but. And I don't think we need to mark them, no. Okay. Uh, now, if you wanted to uh, dot these, that's probably a good plan because this is supposed to be where this piece overlaps and glues down. So we can transfer that mark so we can and transfer we'll cover that mark. it anyways. And yeah. I just used this because I know it's a straight actually, line and You can angle. straight poke this with the, with the pencil because the, stri uh, the, the detail layer is gonna cover them all. Yeah. So you can just stab it. Yep. I do that when I mark my, mark my dart points. Right. Because it's just going to be covered. It's going to be covered. Well, with foam, the... Uh, this one. That one didn't go through. I mean, you know this. But but with foam, your, your weave of the fabric isn't going to heal. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that's leather. You can't poke a hole in leather and expect it to disappear like you can with most other fabrics. There you go, yes. So, yes, foams, non... Yeah, films... <laughs> Foams and films. So we only need one of those. And we only need one of these. So I got one part D. I've got one part E. I haven't done any of those yet. And there's a yet. line piece right here that needs to get done. Okay. And I was thinking of using this edge because I know it's a right angle. Do we need two of these? Yes, we need two of those. So I'll do it this way and that way. Be able to get okay. I'm not going to cut this one just yet. There we go. Seeing movement. People. Connor Cook says, "Hey guys, how's the build going so far? We're tracing patterns onto foam. That's what we're doing today. It's exciting, right? We'll probably get a little further than that, but yeah, that's what we're doing today. I don't know. I think we might end up talking. We might. Because it gets so, like when we're working, we don't do any of that. No. Ah, losing that, losing that. We only need one of these. Correct, because that's the that's the stomach. Okay, got." Two of these, so does that go over there in the done part? And this goes in the done pile. This can go to the done, done, done. And you need two of those, I'll let you do those. Right, yeah. And I'll do this guy. So I'm doing the two of these. Mm -hmm. That's really not going to save me any. None of this is going to save foam. I will put this piece here. That's fine. Right? The, there's, there comes a point when you're cutting weird shapes, you can't, like... Yeah. No, I know. It doesn't It doesn't happen. I can at least try. Yes. I have these lovely machine blocks that I'm not using. Yeah, I was. I got my first couple of zones without using them, too. Yeah. But, well, I haven't you know. cut it yet. Oh, that's fine. 
We don't need the machine blocks to cut it so much. As, uh, yeah, to trace the patterns, but apparently I'm impatient for that. It's fine. I love how you're using the ruler. That's awesome. I just using the side of the, of the paper. <laughs> well, I was doing that too, but... Nope, nope. It's great. I love these stupid rulers. They're clear and see-through. Far more precise. Because the paper does move. <laughs> yeah. And I would probably make these papers and patterns out of the rulers anyways, so... Anyways. Can okay. cut them out now. We can cut them out now. So you got, you got part C. Yes, yeah, so you've got the stomach in the back and the straps. So you've got all the parts that have stripes on them, all the parts that have the texture, and I've got all the flat parts. All right. So we can hide my mistakes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Um, so I was going to steal this one. Was the one I was going to go for. But mm -hmm. which one do you recommend? You can steal that one. Uh, let's put a new blade, new blade in. Blade on it. I'll let mm -hmm. you do that. So I was actually trying to use this one earlier today, and I was not impressed with the quality of its cutting. Right? Yeah, sharp blade makes a huge difference. Huge difference. You're not, like, cursing every moment of using it. So, yeah. So the difference between using a sharp blade and using a dull blade when cutting foam is uh, you actually have a cut edge that you can glue because it's got a good cut side, or it's curled and just torn. <laughs> it's, and you can easily feel the difference when it happens. Yes, don't use these for cutting cardboard and then go to foam. Right. It's the worst thing you could do. One cut, no. <laughs> yeah, very much like fabric scissors. Now I'm using a snap-off blade. Um, and he has the fancy sous knife. Yeah. So I kind of imagine this like if you were um, one of those chefs that does the cooking in front of right. people. <laughs> Except for you're making armor sure. I'm gonna... <laughs> instead of food. Right. Not as Pretty delicious, much. but when you do that, that's what I'm imagining. Like you're putting on the Odin show. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to freehand this. I feel that's... like I'm not supposed to, but I'm going to. You can. All right, well, if it turns out wrong, I'll let you do it over well, again. You've, you've got... Uh... You've got you, you've got curves you're dealing with there, so that's all right. I wandered, <laughs> but I'm pretty close. Because so I started on the inside of the pencil line, but by the time I got to the end, I was outside of the pencil line. <laughs> you're only off the width of a pencil line. I believe all these cut edges are going to have uh, half dowels for uh, edging as well. So we can hide decorative. our mistakes? A little bit. Okay. Or we can uh, use a Dremel and create your favorite foam dust and uh, help hide mistakes. There's that too, yeah. Foam dust is a killer to my lungs and it's disappointing, but that's okay. Well, it's a killer to kind of everyone's lungs, but you, you actually seem to have the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, like, you could see me go... I am going to use a knife on these though, they can score. A ruler. Straight edge. Straight edge. That isn't plastic. Wow. General Zodberg is saying that he tried snapping off the end of a snap blade once, and it slid up in his hand, and he got five stitches. Did you ever try to snap it off into your hand, were you? <laughs> I'm, I'm snapping it off onto something else. And a, and a lot of these snap-off knives, um, this one does too, it has a, a bark. It has a... A little slit in the end of the knife so you can actually take the end off put it over the blade to help you break it but no, different knives are made by different manufacturers and they all have different what the, whatever it is they're gonna do I heard about um, a lady who put pins in her mouth while she was sewing and then she and now, like, I've just, like, for the last week, every time I go to put a pin in my mouth, go, no. Nah. But granted, I wear a mask at work, and so it doesn't happen half as much anymore. You just pin it in the mask? <laughs> no, it gets to my sleeve. Oh, okay. But, yes. It's probably a better plan. I know, but it's just the, one of those habits you don't even think about, and now global pandemic hit, and you can't even think about. So there's this really fun X-Files episode that, uh, you know, as X-Files does, Whatever's going on is actually real, you know, mm -hmm. where no one else wants to believe it. So uh, the witch got really upset with someone uh, and took the pin cushion from across the room and teleported it all into the woman's stomach. Lovely. Which, of course, induced vomiting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pins and Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I designed a whole dress 
lace around them. Aren't they lovely? Uh-huh. Slightly off the cut mat, which is yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> gonna make it a little weird. Here, so you you had the big piece, so yep, but that's already cut and done. Okay, well, I'm done with those two. How's that blade working? Up? Is it actually feeling sharp and cutting? Yes, Good. I did nick it there. In there, but that's yeah. my cutting skills. Right, not, not the knife; it's actually doing great. Right, so there is there is a there is a trick to as much as you can. You start and continue to cut all the way through uh, your entire piece because you end up with uh, one continuous edge. You can see I'm not perfect ninety. Um, when you don't, and you pick up the blade, especially if you take the blade out and then you want to put it back in and go again. Um, if you Move the foam so it's easier for you to work on it. Chances are good you're also going to slightly move your hand and you get a little bit of a rough edge. It's not a big deal. It's easy yeah. to take off with a, with a Dremel. And when you're gluing things together, it's not enough to really knock things out of whack. Yeah. It's foam. <laughs> My teacher in art school always told us to do little gentle mm -hmm. uh, um, cuts multiple in the same spot. Yep. But that's for cutting, not foam, but for yeah, foam for cutting. cord. Foam core board. But right, foam core like, board, uh, poster board, styrene, almost everything else. Yes, but it's really foam, good to do multiple I, little cuts. It's really better to, to do that. Yeah, you yeah. just push all the way through so you feel the cutting mat, and then you just, if you've got a sharp blade, it's not a big deal. Yeah, but we are covering these seams, so. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I don't do it right, but I can try. There we go. Not that big. My big piece out of the way here in a second. And right, got, the bulk. Then I got the other, the other uh, three to still kind of trim up a bit. And then we still have the strips to cut out of the uh, four millimeter. Well, there you go. It wasn't this one. This one. The foam moved while I was cutting it. Control R Delete is asking if I also do giveaways from time to time. Uh, I haven't, but uh, what I am going to be doing, uh, there's a Kickstarter that just started with Ben Eady and his uh, Foam Armory Scale Mail Foam, which I still didn't bring down from upstairs and should do that. Um, I'm going to be sending a couple of pieces over to him, so it'll be the very first time anything that I have made will be openly for sale to the public. It's part of the Kickstarter. Ben Eddy and, and Foam Armory is totally in charge of what's going to happen with it and how. Uh, but the Kickstarter is live. I actually just looked at the thing this morning. It just started the 1st of May. Yeah. So it got delayed a couple of days. But the Kickstarter is currently live. It's already almost funded. Oh, wow. Yeah, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. <laughs> that means we get some fun stuff coming out. Yeah, we get some fun stuff coming out. Uh, but it's still got all of May to finish. And uh, definitely, I'm, we're sending the Witcher armor that, that Felicia and I had made previously here on, on the live stream because it was using his chain mail. Yeah, yes. We don't want to walk in the foam and leave doggy points. No, I know. His toe prints. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I'll be sending the Land of Corissian helmet from Return of the Jedi, and we'll be sending the Witcher armor. Yeah, I yeah. think it's really, I think it's a cool helmet. Yeah, yeah it's a cool helmet. That's a great helmet. I, I like our Witcher armor, and it fits multiple sizes, so it's not. Right. So anybody could fit on it. Well, I'm too tiny for it. Size large. Size large. Size large, extra large. And there's another yeah. channel called Much Props. They've done a lot of stuff. There's a bunch of stuff that Much Props has put together for the Kickstarter. A bunch of face masks with chain mail on it, uh, a really good Viking helmet. So it's time to get prepped for Halloween this year, right? <laughs> right. They even have a uh, King nice. Arthur helmet, which I don't know if Much Props did that one, but Kickstarter's live and it's very cool. So, if you want an opportunity, to, rare opportunity to get one of Odin's props, right? check it out. And also a great opportunity to help support someone's business 
that uh, has been really nice to us. Right? So. If you cut that in half, I'll cut the other one out. Although, oh, there it is. Stupidio sahas. Uh, no, not stupid. Sorry, said that. So it's all the right letters, but totally spelled, uh, totally arranged a different way. So I'm stupid. Um, Sudipto. <laughs> Sudipto. Uh, <laughs> I've known a man So Sudipto. Uh, Saha. Hi from India. <laughs> Hello in India. That was a really long way of getting there. Getting there. Me quickly yeah. looking and and and. and being just dyslexic enough to be able to... Oh, that's this word, because it's all the right letters. <laughs> Order, whatever. <laughs> Holly Suchman, oh, you should make the uh, Hallspark. Were you the one that was saying that earlier when I brought out the... the so the Allspark, this is the one from the Michael Bay film that looks like a, a, a metallic croissant. That one? Could probably do that. Then you'll have a start of a collection. I'll have a start of a collection. Jeez, there's so much dust in here. My hands are already covered in dust. Right. Well, I was working on, you know, I was working on Wednesday's uh, project this morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've already shot three hours today before the live stream started. <laughs> Squid stick, make cuts on foam. Yes, this is how we make cuts on foam. <laughs> I've done a whole live stream like this. It's exciting. We cut out the legs to the, uh, to the Gundam armor. Yeah. And I was the only one here, so I was just cutting and... It was, it was riveting. That's what <laughs> is. Uh, Jorts is saying that they've seen the scale mail used by Much Props, building an awesome Viking helmet. Yeah, that Viking helmet is on the Kickstarter. That is available for, for getting a hold of. <laughs> I'm going to throw these little bits away. They're not big enough for anything to That's save. Totally cool. Uh, Dylan's Cosplay says, Cool building! It! Well, it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of explanation. <laughs> <laughs> and figure maker props is saying hey right back right back to uh, dylan's cosplay tom grew says hi from poland it's the country where witcher was born yes it is yes it is hello uh witcher season three is going to be going into production so very soon yes i think they've been doing a fabulous job on that and right i feel like everything made by it has been made by fans like the video games, the books, right. the movie, like it is just people who are, yeah, yeah, that appreciate that thing that makes it magical. I guess you could say, sort of like that Harry Potter world, Star right. Wars world. I think The Witcher has its own little it does nerdy world, and I love it. <laughs> so are you trying to to, to cut? Yeah, this? I just you gave can't. up. Nope, I was like, you can't <laughs> unless I go slightly deeper of a curve, but I'm not right. going to do that. Uh, that is one of the issues with foam is that it 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 doesn't have enough stiffness to be able for the blade to purchase when you're shaving off just a little bit. I can do it with the, the bandsaw that I've got because the blade's constantly moving in direction. So I could catch that and clean it up. But At we're going to cover it the with dremels. a dowel. Yeah, Drum, uh, dowel and dremel is about the, the two best ways of, of, of fixing this at this point. Okay, yep. So I did screw it up, but just one spot. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so we need to do strips. Because it's, you know, it'll it's going to be covered. So we want to do strips. Strips. Lots and lots. Should we do a lot of strips and then cut them down to the thing? Yeah. So we have a bunch of long I think that's probably a really wise idea. Now. If we start at the straight edge and just keep cutting straight strips. And if it's a meter, would a meter stick work? Yes. Or would it be better just to cut it into smaller bits and not even deal with this? Probably be better because we don't need any strips longer, longer than, than this. Longer than that, so we can fold it in half and go. So, yeah, it looks like if we just do half, we can... Because the there's only... Yeah. I totally. love how we scaled it down and it fits perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like when little things like that ha happen, it means that my math was right. Because <laughs> it's within the scale of the universe. Right. You know, like it's within whatever... <laughs> Yeah. So these are not that thickness, but that's all right. Um, but this will give us a right angle. To start cutting? To, to get the, the one piece down. And we need enough to do this piece. We need enough to do the stomach piece. And then we'll want to cut a bunch of these. 
So. If you oh, okay. If we do this many, we can use them for this, and then we can use the extra strips chopped down into that. I was just going to go this way and have this oh, piece Oh, there you go. Piece. That works, too. Well, That's anyways. Kind of, but that's pretty much what I was looking at, too. So. So I was wondering how, how far do up do I go? This? Yeah, how, I'll go up to 10 inches. Okay. We'll, we'll end up with more than we need, but whatever. Better that than not enough. Uh, yup. So you move it. Control, alt, or delete. Hey Odin, what is the prop you spent the least amount of time on? I would have to really think about that. I've made jokes about Harry Potter wand. Walking in the forest. Oh look, a stick! Um, I spent the least amount of time on. So... I think, I think Felicia nailed it. Yeah, I think the one I spent the least amount of time on was my Game of Thrones prop. I think I've only made one Game of Thrones prop for my channel, and this has got to be it. <laughs> uh, it's not really on the YouTube channel. You can find that buried in my Instagram, or uh, I've actually got a TikTok that I haven't updated in two years. Uh, but it was the last thing I think I put on TikTok. <laughs> it's pretty dusty. It's pretty dusty. <laughs> Uh oh. No, it's okay. Yeah, no, I think that's the one. That's probably the one. I think I spent more time setting the background up for shooting the video than I did on the prop. But I actually went through the drive thru to get it. <laughs> I, 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 I correctly picked up the, 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 the raw materials. did not have the cup labeled the full Daenerys name as, as she uses it in, in the show. Uh, eh, the way I shot my video, it wasn't, uh, wasn't necessary. You can still add her name. Still can. Okay, I'd have to look it up because there's no way I can remember that from off the top of my head. <laughs> So, do I have a ruler that's the right thickness for that's this? That's what I was wondering. Is this one? It's just not. Not quite, huh? It is if you took off a quarter inch. Took off a quarter inch? Yeah, it's a quarter inch too wide. Well, this is an inch and a quarter, so. This one is so, a mil like a. So it is just under an inch? Is no, that, isn't this an inch? It's just a. That, that, that's an inch, yeah. So it's just, I mean, we can do an inch, but... No, it's about a quarter inch, slightly inch bigger an than an inch. Like one more little... Well, that's like a quarter inch. Well, this Not is an inch a quarter inch, eighth. it's one more eighth of an inch wider. Okay, well, this is one and an eighth. One and an eighth, then that's the right width, because this is one and... It's an eighth and an eighth If I could talk, an eighth of an inch too narrow. <laughs> Millimeters would be so much easier, wouldn't it? Well, it's an eighth of an... It, 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 it's 28 millimeters. Yeah. yeah, but the fact that it's an evenly an eighth of an inch. Yeah, it's off, nice. <laughs> I feel like that means our math and scaling is in the correct right. scale, if that makes sense. Anyways, the it numbers does. feel more validating. Do we want to just play with the rulers, or do we want to uh, play with a whole other tool? Just play with the rulers. Um, I'm okay with using power tools. Well, it's not a power tool. Oh, what tool are you? Oh, yeah, your cosplay apprentice tools. Right. Yes, these fancy things. I've never fancy used things. them. Oh, okay. So I would just use a stick and a blade like a well, primitive human being. Technically, but this is a stick with a blade. It's just got an over-designed over blade. <laughs> yes. So yes, we should use the stuff that's going to make it turn out better. Oh, look at red and blue. I want the red one. <laughs> All right, you have the red one. side you want it to go? Yep, so you're right-handed or left-handed. I've got it set up for right-handed because I am. I'm ambidextrous, so it doesn't matter. You just hand it to me. <laughs> How are we going to do this? Show so, me. all I want, all I, all I would do at this point is I take the ruler that I know is the right size. I put it up against the edge of the foam. So now I know this size is the side I want to cut. So I move this right up against it. I can take this out of the way. And then this fits in the uh, in the channel. Ta -da! And you need to keep pressure on this because as no, I get as it. I move, it'll yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I've got things. 
You've cut things. I've cut things. I've made that mistake multiple <laughs> times enough to know. But yes, heat and pressure. And don't look at it as you're doing it. Right. <laughs> I know it's easy to peek and you want to do this, but Oops. it'll be off as you go. There's only one more reason I can let you do this and watch you. Oh, well. There you go. <laughs> once I get one set up, I can let go of the ruler. I mean, the, uh, the yard, the meter, here's the yard stick. The meter stick's the same, but. Is it? Width, yes, they're both one and an eighth inch. They're both 28 millimeter. But um, there's, there's not, not a whole lot of table. <laughs> right? Uh, Tim75311, super chat for $5, says, Hey, Odin, it's Tim from Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh, hey, I know this guy. I met him. We, we watched God, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong together. Um, you two are keeping me company while I work on my graphic novel that I told you about. Oh, sweet. There's just not enough table. I'm going to let you cut these. Sorry. Okay, there, that's there's fine. a hill that you do not notice until you try and balance a straight line evenly on yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. In fact, that straight line just got me here. I didn't get cut yeah. all the way through. Yeah, I'm like, just just use the straight piece. Okay. <laughs> you can have the table. We don't have to both cut it out at the all same right. time. This fine. is annoying. It is. <laughs> at some point in time in the magical future, I'll fix that. <laughs> Sorry. Right here. I will see what people are saying. Please do. I'm on the box! <laughs> here you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Huh. <laughs> well, she's seeing what people are saying, but she's not sharing. She's just laughing at you. Uh, yeah, laughing no. at the jokes. <laughs> um, let's see. Trash Panna says, at Connor Cook, my son now uses snowboard in place of the F-bomb. Congratulations. Oh! Good. My Snowboard one, that. <laughs> my favorite one was flipping. Flipping. Uh, Smosh said fire truck, right? Yeah. Yeah, but flipping, right. Well, because it's gymnastics. Oh, there you go. I loved flipping. Okay. So it was my favorite swear word when I was, you know, little. Right. So. I have a friend who actually actively attempts to not swear at all, and flipping is what he used. It's yeah. flipping and hecking. But the thing is. And is crap. That, Crap's okay, apparently. Honestly, <laughs> I feel like if you. Might as well just use a real swear word at that point. Yeah, pretty Like, much. you mean the same thing. So, yep. I really don't, you know, like, it was just growing up rules. And now I'm a grown up. I'm like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yay for being a grown up. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, hello, Odin, big fan. Can you say hi, Grant Gandu Choda? He's my cousin and he's also a fan of your channel. And I'm sorry if I screwed up his name, but they asked Gandu me. Choda? I can't Chata. Gondu. <laughs> Let me get my broken eyes over here. G-A-N-D-U. <laughs> Chanda. Gandu. Ch uh, yeah, Choda. Chanda. Yeah, Choda okay. probably. Gandu. Well, hello, Gandu. 1960s FCC censorship. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, actually, swearing has been proven to help people deal with painful moments. So, you know what? If it's a coping mechanism, I'm not yeah. opposed to it. Just There's like. a brief time there in the 80s where things seemed to relax a little bit for at least UHF channels. And everything clamped right back down again. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I heard there was this one comedian called, I don't know, his last name was like Carlin, and he, there was like seven words you weren't supposed to say. Yeah. 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 I never memorized those. <laughs> but but he the, um, he kept adding to the list, and I think one, one of his live shows, he brought out literally a scroll <laughs> that bounced on the stage and fell into the audience of, these are more words you can't say on television. <laughs> Good thing we're on the internet, and the yeah. algorithm gets to decide these things, so. Right. You know, you can't use gun, but you can say you gun. Pretty much. You, yeah. yeah, actually. Yeah. Hey, Bruce yeah. can say it. I'm kind of curious, because I see like the, the, the channels are actually gun channels. It's like, are you guys not? Profitable. They're making their profits in other ways. Yeah. yeah. So we got somebody who wants us to say hi for their mom. Hi, mom! But she got in a car wreck last night, so let's... Oh, wow. Hope she's doing better. I hope she's doing better. Okay. That took a turn. I didn't see that. Yeah. Turn. Sorry. I hope she's doing <laughs> okay. I don't okay. pre-read them either. Yeah. <laughs> Indiana Jones says, your work belongs in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, if you want to see Odin's work on display, he goes to cons, yep. and you can go visit his booth where you can take pictures and play with his props. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, I right now I have intent of being at Sac Anime. That's going to be a Labor Day weekend. Dragon Con's the same weekend. I don't think I'm going to have the funds to travel to Dragon Con, or specifically I'm going to have the funds to uh, hotel at Dragon Con. Uh, so I'm probably going to be at Sac Anime. Um, there's a Lodi Con coming up. I might be with a booth at that. Otherwise, uh, I might go to Powerhouse Con. That's these are all Northern California, by the way. They're all yes. ones I can drive to. But yay, you're fully vaccinated. Yeah. You can con I can again. I can go. I can con again. Powerhouse, I'll just be there. And um, the uh, Silly Con, the Silicon Valley Comic Con. Adam Savage took over. It's just called Silly Con now. I'll probably be going to that one and just walking around. Yep, Aww, it does that. dog fell off the couch, and then this... Th where's your... I can't see the comments because they moved past... There's your mouse. It's around here somewhere. I'm like, I can't. I was reading stuff, and now it's, like, up there. <laughs> Happens. Okay. So it's one edge, actually. So where was I? They're still asking for that Winter Soldier arm. Yep. Um, noted. <laughs> Bob's? Big Bob's prop says, Felicia, could you use a magnetic wrist pin cushion? Yes, I have opinions on those things, and yes, <laughs> I do not have one that meets my standards as of yet. The one I have that fits the most comfortable is the weakest magnet, and I freaking hate it. And I do not like the ones that poke through because they, unless there's a plastic bag backing, it stabs your wrist and leaves like little, looks like you're cutting yourself. It looks really awful. So I do want. A better one. Yes, there's some on the market. No, they're not the ones I want, and I'm dealing with this problem. I haven't figured out which one I like yet. However, you're happy with the magnetic ball. Yes, no, but <laughs> there is a benefit to when you're doing certain, like when you're pinning a skirt, to having that attached to your wrist. Oh, for sure. While you are doing this, it makes a big difference, but I havenven't found a magnetic wristband that right. I've liked yet. But well, this like, is my favorite. Yeah, I like that for, for that. There's that's pretty minimal drop coming out of that <laughs> compared to just spilling a bowl of pins. Yeah. So I stole the bowl idea from my dad. My grandma had gotten my dad a... Uh, oh, that one right there. Yep. I was like, totally well, that, that one had more in it. <laughs> no, I know, but this is the one that I stole from my dad. The, but it's a magnetic bowl for... Um, just nuts, bolts, parts. Car parts. parts. So when he's taking and working on his car, he could put them in here. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, this thing's amazing. And I stole it. And then I found this one at the store. So I bought a new one. But I still, yeah, these yep. bowls are my favorite. But I do want a wrist one. And no, I don't have one that I like yet. Okay. <laughs> this moment, this moment has kind of passed. But Felicia has the same feelings towards foam dust as Odin does towards snowboarding, LOL. Well, yeah. Snowboard it! <laughs> you have to think about these things. There's a reason they're wearing respirators and stuff because mm -hmm. it's a talk, it makes yep, me yep. sick and I can't deny the effects it has. Anyways, um, control alt delete says my dog fell off the couch today. He's okay, but he's scared the sh crap out of us. Oh, poor doggy. Uh, control alert delete. Allard. Okay. Allard, Allard, one of those two, yeah. So, uh, I like how Th Thomas Ledbetter says, George Carlin. George Carlin. <laughs> yes. Hi, Odin. I just finished a Patreon pack build for the Ghostbusters movie. Would you consider making any props for the new movie coming out? Hmm. Um, I have considered props, yes. You have considered um, Ghostbuster packs and... I've considered, I've considered, uh, yes, I have considered the backpacks. I've got some good reference of a blank, uh, one of the original blank, uh, what's a blank? It's, it's the basic piece that then got decorated to be the full proton pack. I know somebody who has a cast of one of the original blanks, so I've taken pictures of it and I've gotten measurements off of it. Uh, I like I, that because I just used a backpack last yeah. time. I built one of those, well, one of those camping backpacks, you know. The, sure. That's well, what they're, we they're built off of uh, the military Alice frames is what they use in the movie. So we use the frames from those it's, camping backpacks. It's pretty much a hiking basic. backpack, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, when... Yeah, the Alice pack is very, very similar to that. I have a couple of Alice frames. Um, I also have the original 70s 
shoe polisher that the PKE meter was based off of. And that's actually what I have the most interest in making. Okay. Because it's, it's smaller. And um, yeah, I just, I don't know. So yes, you've thought about it. I have thought about it. Gaming, Gamer Raccoon 18, like your name, says, I'm making something right now. Well, thank you for crafting along with us. I hope you're having fun. Are you making a Dragon Ball thing with us? The, the immediate thing comes to mind, which isn't terribly, terribly fair, Gamer uh, gamer Raccoon 18, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Predator's Helmet. What's that? No, they said make a Predator's Helmet. I thought make they were a making helmet. a Predator's oh. Helmet, but they said to. Um, was Gamer Raccoon 17 taken? Was Gamer Raccoon 16 taken? You know, it's, it's not fair, but uh, it's, it's not very nice. It's just one of those things that comes to mind when I see numbers. <laughs> I'm like, is it a birthday? Is it an age? Or Usually is it's it a birthday, a... yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or an important date. But, um, or their password I've numbers, a, because right, <laughs> right. I, I had a friend whose whose online name was was you know ended in nine thousand. It wasn't uh, or two thousand. It wasn't nine thousand. It was two thousand. And so you know they we were just two thousand and late. Started just ribbing the poor guy about oh was was the other one was was nineteen ninety nine taken? Was one thousand taken? I mean, have have you run into the other, you know, two thousand? Two thousand and one. Yeah, because you're actually two thousand and one, right? Because the first one didn't call himself, you know, zero zero zero. People are still trying to figure out that winter arm, winter soldier arm. It is a very complicated piece. It is a very complicated piece. I feel like piece. if you pull it off well, that one would be a really good, you know, but it's yeah. CGI. Right. Converted into practical. Right. Yeah. And I've seen someone actually just shared with me uh, pictures of their build that they're doing on, on Instagram. Um, I saw a hand that looked really good, uh, but the... Uh, the arm was done the way I've seen all the other arms. It was an upper, it was a shoulder and an upper bicep. This was just open, and there was a lower arm. And that makes the most sense. That's that's going to be the easiest way to do it. But that elbow mechanics, that's where the... That's where the magic is, kind of. Yeah. And Movement. It's its not easy. These yeah. joints, they rotate and they straighten. Right. And this can rotate in this area, and it can... But right, right here, this joint... Does... CGI. Yes, does CGI. <laughs> and if you watch the movie, the, the, the plates like don't always exist the same way and they don't overlap. They like completely disappear when he straightens his arm to bend his yeah. arm. Yeah, yeah, they, they well, yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no practicality in that arm, there's no real, you know, like it is no. magic. Yes. <laughs> Wakandan magic. Tom Grew says, Odin, why did you cut this stripes? Uh, it's part of the Dragon Ball Z armor. So let me let me actually get my face back towards the camera. Let me not step on any tails. So I cut a whole bunch of strips because the this is the back, but the the stomach and the back of the Dragon Ball Z armor have these raised striped details, and so I've cut a bunch of these to do exactly that, and that's why I cut them. So. Are all our foam pieces more or less cut out? All of our foam pieces are more or less cut out. Now we just have to trim down the foam to, or do we glue it and then trim it down? We'll, we'll glue it and then trim it down. That makes more sense. Yeah. But we can start. We can start gluing and trimming and whatever in whatever order we want. Yay! Yay! Um, it looks like these are about six millimeter. Separations. Separations. Is that a coffee stir? Um, coffee stir is pretty close, but the. The foam is six mil. Oh, so you could just use a piece of foam as opposed to, well, this is a little wider, isn't it? Well, you're not even on one of the separations. Oh, that would make so much more sense, but, but it's no, exactly yeah. there. Yeah, coffee stirs, pretty much the same too. So, the exact yeah. same width. Yep. So I eyeballed it in popsicle sticks and you eyeballed it in foam. So what units are you using? Yes. <laughs> How do you convert popsicle sticks to foam? Popsicle sticks, <laughs> yes. Yes. Units. Units. At least it's not imperial. <laughs> right. So we have help today here in the studio. Uh, they stepped out for a brief moment, but when they come back, I'll open up some viewer mail from my mom. So this should be interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. We hit the 
one o'clock. It is one o'clock. We are midstream. Well, sort of. Yeah, midstream. You never want to stop midstream. No. <laughs> you totally stop midstream. It just takes uh, practice. Oh. Uh, oh, what's what's this? Oh, somebody on Discord sharing the Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, uh, uh, dual hard. disc. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, we are at the bottom of that one. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, did you uh, how do we want to do this? I'm following your lead because this is your area of expertise. These All are right. not pattern pieces. So yeah, I'm not gonna pattern pieces. Of. That is a drawer, not the. There. Okay. <laughs> so pattern piece. Summer piece. piece. These well, ones if, if don't have this one is not. Nope, I think it's just. This is the back. That's the stomach. This, this, and this, and this one. Yes, and these that ones is are it. not. Yep. And these are pattern pieces, and these things aren't. Are not. We are semi-organized. We are. I wonder how many of these scraps will pull out of the trash to be able to use the squeegees for glue. There you go. <laughs> I'm just clearing work surface. That's fine. Because there's good for you. Not I left. I do let the work surface pile up with cut foam, so. Happens to the best of us. Uh, Wait, I'm going to leave this out because that's our reference. Right. These can go with those. Do you need this ruler? I do not. I'll put it away. Space, we have it again. Here's some Just more. Just Okay. Oh, hopefully I can smack her in the face with a ruler. Who are the three people that disliked? I don't know. It's probably good. I, I don't think I can tell. And even if I could, oh, whatever. Passionate viewers. Yep. Thank you for or, caring. Or dispassionate. One way viewers. or another. You know, some kids, they fight for that negative attention. Yeah. Negative attention's better than no attention, apparently. Apparently. I don't like it, though. Okay, so let's see what people are saying while you're doing that. Popsicle sticks. Americans will literally use anything but the metric. LOL. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, this actually is a coffee stir stick, which is six millimeters wide. A popsicle stick is 10 millimeters wide. And the tongue depressor, I haven't measured because I don't have any here right now. I've used them all up. Um, yeah, no, totally. We'll use anything other than the metric and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not proud. Except when we use that within conversion of our popsicle sticks. Okay, I'm going to get some paper because I like to, when I'm spreading glue, I prefer to put paper down because I don't end up with a ton of glue residue on my cut surface, which then sticks. Uh, however, Joe, who was working in here earlier this week, didn't care, so I got glue all over my cut surface. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I often paint over this too. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's almost like a... <laughs> you know what you've done this, this before. before. Specifically with this piece of paper before. There so, you go. What's happening in Super Chat? I can't read that one right now. That's okay. You can. I can. Okay. Well, pardon me. I don't want to squeeze you off here. Maximilian Hammerschmidt with uh, 10 euro. Wow. Uh, hey, Odin. Would you consider building Sex Machine's croc crotch gun from till uh, from dusk till dawn? Uh, don't know if you're familiar. Yes, I am. Tom Savini. It's a great, great uh, crotch gun. Uh, big... Uh, Robert Rodriguez fan. He was the director from Dust Till Dawn and the writer, I think. Uh, no. no, he co-wrote, right? It was him and uh, Tarantino co-wrote from Dust Till Dawn. Anyway, uh, Maximilian says that he actually modeled, animated, and textured it. That's pretty cool. Um, the issue of doing anything gun uh, on, on YouTube is... Uh, their algorithm. Yeah, their algorithm. YouTube doesn't like that firearms thing. And so if I was to do a video that was specifically was a firearm, uh, as opposed to, say, a blaster, um, it doesn't push the video, and it doesn't get the views. So the best way to, to, to kind of talk about it is, you know, imagine going to work for a week and not getting paid. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not against it. It's a very cool prop. It's not a real gun at all, uh, but YouTube doesn't care. But all hail the algorithm. All hail the algorithm. Oh, no, I don't hear whistling. I hear a siren. Yeah, no, we don't have a police cam. We only have a train cam. Yeah. Well, it. If, if the police drive down the train track, that'd be pretty cool. Do some okay. hazard style, maybe jump it back there, because there's no roads. <laughs> there's no roads, no. No, no, there isn't. Uh, there's, there's overpasses for, for most of that train. Um, 
What I'm going to be using for gluing the foam together is contact cement. So we were playing around, joking around with it earlier with the patrons. Contact cement is a uh, construction adhesive. Uh, I am most familiar with it for being used, well I'm most familiar with it being used for foam. But outside of that, this is what was used to put the laminate onto your countertop. Is there a difference between rubber cement and contact cement? In my mind, yes. Uh, and it has to do with formulation and grip. Uh, rubber cement will, uh, you know, bonds paper great and will glue together a number of other things, but I believe it is easier to pull apart okay. than contact cement. I think contact cement is stronger than rubber cement. However, they are both a flexible adhesive. They are both an adhesive where you paint it on part A and part B, and then you let it dry. And once it uh, finally looks dry, then you stick the two pieces together like sticking two stickers together. Yeah, I, that part tripped me out the first time I used it. I was like, wait, what? Right. No, that that's, doesn't, that's not that's, how glue that's works. That's not how glue works. You stick it together while it's wet and you let it dry. Yeah, no, it works so much <coughs> It'll better never once dry. I figured it out. But yeah. yeah, and then also people are like, no, it's contact cement, not rubber cement. And I'm like, well, what's the difference? Okay. <laughs> right? So is it brand? No, it, it, there's no, actually a difference. There's actually, there's difference. actually a formulaic difference between the two, yeah. Like I wouldn't use rubber cement to glue together a countertop, <laughs> you know, or, or, or any, anything else construction. Rubber rots, yep. so I can't see it lasting long term. No, what's interesting is I'm pretty sure there's some sort of long organic mo molecule that's in contact cement. You can see it because... It's the brown color? It does the stringy thing, right? Those okay. are long molecules. Um, or molecule chains. Polymers. Uh, polymers, yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if latex isn't part of this as well. Yeah, but yeah, long term, long term storage of rubber just right, especially sun and heat will deteriorate it like yeah, nobody's business. Yep. And if you add sunshine factor into that, bye bye. But bye bye. Yep. But contact cement, I feel like okay, yep. it's not rubber. No. It does, uh, deals with the heat pretty well. So we got to just start coating these? Pretty much. Well, it's 1 p.m. Oh, yeah, you have viewer mail. I have mail to open, and I wanted to do that. I've been saving it for this. So 1 p.m., uh, if, if if any of you are ever interested in, in, in having me open up something on air, uh, my P.O. box is listed right in the description of this video. Feel free to send me something, and uh, I'll open it up. And if it happens to be something I don't want to share, then I won't share it after I've opened it. Um, and, of course, I would appreciate it if you didn't send things like anthrax. You know, glitter bombs. Glitter bombs. Cat litter. Don't need that. But um, Mom sent me a couple of boxes. I think I'll go grab one of them and open it up. I have no idea what's in here. Uh, the only thing I know for sure is in one of these boxes, I'm only going to open one today, should be my bronze baby shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but aside from that, I don't know. And I was surprised at how big the boxes were and the fact that there was more than one. Well, it was interesting last week's. I liked your Indiana Jones picture. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hello, Felicia and Odin. I hope you're having a great day. Well, the very broad set, Zach, I hope you're having a good day, too. Oh, D Dimitri E. Blaze says hello to me. Tess says hello. Uh, let's make sure. Yep. Okay. And... Yep. Oh, I can't say that. You can't say that. I can't. <laughs> oh, you can't pronounce. Yeah. May I have a big red one, please? There you go. Thank you. So, Felicia, would you make the Saiyan tail for this build? Yes. There is a Saiyan tail tail will be part of this build. Cool. Just FYI, because you know. Because you want the Saiyan tail. Yeah, right. it's wrapped around and tied. It's part of the, you could just make it a piece and it would just cherry on the top of a costume. You know what I mean? Right. People will appreciate those details. At least I do. And would you? Let me get rid of this. Let me for a better camera shot. All right. I do not know what is in here. Here is stuff my mom has hoarded. These look like delicious marshmallows, but they're not. They're not. They're just forbidden snacks. Even forbidden the pink snacks. ones. How about my teddy bear? Aww. <laughs> it's a little panda bear. I actually remember this. <laughs> Does that say Odin? Does it? There's. Oh, there is something red on here. It's like some kind of. See, the white only comes in this direction. It's an O, and then. Yeah, it could be. There's the I dotted and the N. 
It could be. <laughs> you learned your name and wrote it on your bear. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, yeah. Man, his nose is mad. He used to have a nose. <laughs> My wife is going to love this because she still has her kid bear, childhood bear. So now I've got my childhood bear back. <laughs> What's his name? I don't remember giving him a name. I don't know what that word is, though. It starts with an M. Maid. M-A-D-E. <laughs> Odin Maid. <laughs> Odin Maid. Could be. This could be just printed from something else that was lying on forever. Okay, but yeah, that's definitely your name, though. Okay. Oh, okay. I vaguely remember this. Oh, there's some weird stuff in here. <laughs> yeah. God, this was uh, Cub Scouts, probably. It's a little tomahawk. It's a tomahawk. And it's a rock. Yeah, it looks like from Granite Bay. <laughs> right, probably was. With with a nice... Yeah, well. Um, now we can actually inflict damage. Now I, can have... I think this was... Uh, well, just now I want so one can, of these. I want one of these. I think, it's just, I think it hung on the wall. I think oh, there a, you go. That's what it that's is. That's what that is, yeah. Yeah, it, just in case it doesn't work, you can always... Yeah, there you are. Because <laughs> why why hit with the, with the rock that it's actually kind of brittle when you can hit with a small nail? <laughs> Train! Uh, add fix in. Even, I can't read it. Even Odin's bear can't escape from dust. Yeah, he That's right. <laughs> So I know we're in a tiny window now, so we'll see if I can't grab something a little bigger. At least I think we're in a tiny window now because we got a train. Well, anyway. Okay, got bits and pieces to uh, an old play school wagon car. You probably made that too. <laughs> well, no, I think Play School made this. No, but. I know, but, <laughs> but yeah, it. I'm sure I put it together more than once. Oh, speaking of, <laughs> ah. it's my Weevil Does hat. <laughs> we be loyal scouts, right? Yep. <laughs> they never let me do it, but my brothers did. Yeah, that's a, That's kind of stuck in there. It's kind of stuck in there. Well, there's a lot of Cub Scout stuff in here. There's a Cub Scout hat. <laughs> well, there's the wolf. Yep. When you're a wolf scout. Mom wolf was the coat. dead mother. Did she get the pins? Uh, I imagine she did. You had to kind of make an effort to get them. They didn't just give them easy. No, I remember you went to Mervyn's and bought them. Exactly, yeah. No, you have to go out of your way. You have to yeah, buy them. You have to, to buy them. them. I mean, you, you technically have to earn them, but you actually had to buy them. Is that the little tools to put it together? This is the little tools to put the, uh, the play school thing together. Well, yep. I feel like that could be a thing. Odin makes his old kids. His old toys. <laughs> what else we got in here? This is, this is one of the peg people that probably goes to that. The label's gone. What is... Well, you drew a new face on it. Oh, okay, good. Boxes in the box. Here's oh, the there's a... screws to hold it together. Yep. Some bolts. And more pieces. Feels like that one got glued. Yep. <laughs> Motor. There's another, there's another big pig person. Oh, his face is still there. He looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Odin puppet. Well, it's an owl, and I don't know. Is there beads in it at one point and you shake it? Nope. No, I think it was just the bottle caps. Okay. Fresca, Pepsi, sugar free 7 Up. Ew. <laughs> These are some vintage bottle caps. Oh, I can't read that one. Is that a candle? Yeah. I think I made that. Yeah. With the leaves. I'll press With the leaves. Them. Leaves pressed into it. Yeah, that was. Oh. Yeah. I feel like if you burn this, you'll summon. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll summon the Weebelos. <laughs> There's a vintage Rubik's Cube. <sighs> you actually have to solve that. <laughs> Mine's easier. Yours is easier. More art. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> Bye, Odin. <laughs> Here's a tiger. <laughs> hang it on display. 
Well, this has actually got my uh, address when I live in Castro Valley. 82, sixth grade. Yep. That's a puzzle. So this is some sort of a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> so just, there's so much paper in here. I'm not going to dig all the paper The out. Benjamin says, that's one long train. OMG. <laughs> Phone guy, how long is this train? <laughs> right. Ralph Morick says, back to the studio, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is Odin's frustration with the train every time he tries to build. Last week, none. This week, we're on our fourth or fifth. Yeah. We've got a lot of a lot of paperwork, which probably isn't nearly as much fun. It's a letter. Oh look at that. Got some newspaper of when I was in I was in marching band. I faked it the whole time. Wow, so much dust. <laughs> yeah. So I'll look at the paper later. But there's one more one more little box we'll open up. Is this fun for anyone else? Yeah. Here's your little card, your little tomahawk chop. I'm leaving this guy out because I like him. All right. And his little friend that you drew his face on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you lost a tire. No, I hate when I do that. There you go. Thank you. So you didn't get glue on them? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to break it. Oh. Okay, let's see. Aw, Marius Shoemaker says, I have a plush dolphin I still sleep with. And Squidstick says his cat's sneezing on him, so he's oh. untight. He's untight. Kitty. <laughs> um... What if these packages send someone else like Odin in the future? Hmm. What would you send future Odin? What would I send future Odin? I don't know. I don't know. Lottery numbers won't do future Odin any good. <laughs> I know. Maybe a snack? Because <laughs> I know I'm going to be hungry. <laughs> right. I don't think Odin needs snacks right now either. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm hungry, but... Yeah. I like snacks. Can't deny that. Gluing! Right. Gluing! I've only got the one glue pot, really. No, I know. Okay. It's okay. I'm answering. I'm oh, reading good. people's stuff. And I'm also out of coffee, so I was considering running and grabbing a cup. But. Oh, okay. See, so I could draw. I think I'll just stick them down Show using a... Uh, so you're doing so. the whole thing as opposed to just trying to get it within the strips. Yep. Does it make a difference not getting it in the dents? Um, yes. It'll make a difference not having the glue in the dents in between. You will be able to see, uh, you should be able to see the glue. Um, because it, it creates a difference. It, it's a skin of slightly different texture on, yeah. on the phone. Uh, overall, it's never bothered me. Okay. If that makes sense. Oddly enough, because I get specific about a lot of things. No, I know. That's why I'm curious. Because yeah. <laughs> I would make that effort trying to stay in the lines and... You just went, Yoop. Yep. which I'm not opposed to. I'm just like, that doesn't seem very... That doesn't seem like what you're, you're accustomed to me talking about. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Does, does contact cement get removed from foam as easily as it does with poster board or paper by rubbing it? Like... Yes. No. Yes. You can. It's not quite as easy. Um, but you can just rub it to remove it. Uh, or you can use... Does the, the little rubber cement eraser work on? That I don't know. I haven't tried. Okay, because they have this little... It looks like a little white... Yeah, the little white... And you use it to remove the... <laughs> mm hmm I, I completely remember what you're talking about. I have not tried using that. But there are solvents that you can use that will um, take the contact, the dried contact cement off the foam without really hurting the foam. That's the questions. Mm hmm Especially, wasn't... Very, sim very similar to Jerry uh, props or earlier with the tea visor, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Benjamin says, I'd give future me a massive bag of Legos. <laughs> well, that's what going to the store and getting a bag of Legos does. Gives you future you the Legos. <laughs> what are you going to do nice for future you today? I'm definitely not going working out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and finish a project. <laughs> It would be nice to future yes. me by trying to get something done. There you go. 
phone guy says, oh, why is the contact cement so relaxing? I think it's the fumes. It's probably the fumes. Now, we, I do have a, uh, a vapor mask. It is definitely very much recommended to wear a respirator vapor mask with this because you can smell the fumes. <laughs> I'm sure our, our fe fellow person here in the room can smell the fumes. Um, I've only got two vapor masks, uh, one specifically mine, one specifically Joe's. Um, this is currently not on, um, so it's not blowing air on us. I can turn it on, but it's going to be Honestly, these cold. fumes don't bother me like the dust does. Okay. Like, dust makes me sick, these fumes. Right. So, yeah. They smell nostalgic because my dad's a mechanic, and it smells like dust. Yeah, you there know, you like, go. It's totally. It's like, uh, it, I don't even notice it kind of a thing. But as, as, as was being pointed out to someone you guys can't see, the train cam is sticking out of a 14 inch wide hole in the side of the wall. So, so. They, they poked holes in our box so we yeah. can breathe. <laughs> yes. Con phone guy says, is contact cement dangerous? Um, don't be in a small enclosed, don't do it in the closet. Don't open do it a in window. the closet, open a window. And there are elements of contact cement that are flammable. So yeah. with a whole lot of serious effort, you could probably get the fumes of contact cement to ignite off of your uh, gas water heater. But honestly... Don't do it sitting next to the gas water heater. I've only ever, ever been able to get contact cement to, to ignite by literally putting a flame on it. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody wants to know, isn't this harmful for the dogs? This is very true because it's, it's bothers, bothers some for everyone. But they are below. It's actually a heavy fume. It's a heavy fume, so mm -hmm. it goes, it sinks. I'm Ooh. pretty sure it's a heavy fume. They also are going away where we're not gluing right now. They're over right. there, so they probably but, can smell it. But yes, no, don't put yeah. it in a contained space. Like if you're crafting, be aware of your animals. No. If but you're wearing I, a respirator, can, don't let the kitty cat sit next to you. I can crack the door for more for more airflow, but then yeah, the no, dogs are going out. Okay. They're over there. They're fine. They're not over in our fumes. Uh, Oculus for 2003, because 2002 and 2001 were taken. Exactly. Odd question, but do you Even happen question. to know if there's any way of getting printed text off of Ethernet cable? I want to use it for prop alcohol, right? Alcohol problem could do it. Alcohol could do it. Um, hand sanitizer. I've used that before. Hand sanitizer, which is effectively alcohol. alcohol. Um, Non-acetone fingernail polish remover would probably do it without hurting the... The yeah. jacket on that stuff is probably pretty resilient. You could probably straight use acetone to take the ink off the Ethernet cable. Yeah. And it's not going to hurt it. I would start with hand sanitizer because usually that's right there. Yeah. But and, yeah. And it's stuff that's not going to be harmful to you. So, that yes. Yeah. Jort says, yeah, the fumes sink, so the ventilator on the ceiling doesn't help that much, I guess. No, it does, because it pushes fresh air into our business. It's circulating air, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, if we were totally in an enclosed so, space, you know, that, that's part of the whole uh, pilot light, because that's on the bottom of a hot water heater, right? Um, so yeah, but yeah. <laughs> we, we have some airflow. It's not ideal, but we have some airflow. We are going mad here, though, at the same time, so there's that. Where's the popsicle stick? Oh, you actually wanted to use that? Yeah. Right away. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's my guide for how I put, the, put them down. I thought you were going to use the phone. Oh, well, you're right. I was going to use that. But I think that's a little flatter. Those little popsicle sticks are strangely useful. They are. I appreciate that. Uh... The local green mermaid logoed uh, coffee company, because heaven forbid I say Starbucks on the stream. Um, I'm so glad they give so many of these with every carafe of coffee that yeah. the studio buys. Yeah, there's an endless supply of this particular craft supply. <laughs> or mm -hmm. feels, you know, near endless. And they're wood, so, you know, they're oh, guys. nicer for the environment. What's happening, phone guy? I, I was just gonna say, phone guy says every time I make a prop, I get some hot glue on my pants or shirt. A yep. world stops me, stops for me. <laughs> um, if you get hot glue mashed into the fibers of your pants or shirt, you're you're kind of done for. You 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 you, you have a friend for the life of that that garment. However. If you get hot glue dripped on your table or dripped on some, something else where you don't want it, rub, rubbing alcohol will pop it right off. Yeah. It's really goofy. And sometimes instead of pushing, trying to, if you get it on your clothing, instead of trying to rub it off way while it's still hot, let it solidify while it's on top of the fibers and then mm -hmm. pick it off. Yep. 
So, but yeah, glue, hot glue. You know, they should give a license for hot glue. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Um, box armorer. 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 Odin, any tips for on what foam EVA preferably would be best for LARP armor? I can't afford what what the foam, and ideally, it'd be fairly thin. You've come up with lots of foam. Oh, well, LARP armor? Yeah. Yeah, if you just want... Formats, it, right? Yeah, formats. If you just want an inexpensive LARP armor, armor um, get the fatigue mats, is what they call it. Harbor Freight Tools. So if you're in, in the U.S. or North America... Super easy to find because they're a coast to coast chain. Um, it, it's it's 24 inch square. They, it has a texture on one side, but it is EVA foam. It's just a very soft EVA foam, yeah. and it's it varies. It's anywhere from uh, uh, a centimeter thick to about 12 millimeters somewhere in there. They, they it's meant to be walked on, so they're not super consistent on exactly how how thick it is. But um, it's a good cheap option. It's a real good cheap option. And it's made to take the abuse of being walked all over, so we mm -hmm. can take some beatings from LARPing. Yep. Especially if you use the correct weaponry. And you can always put uh, fabric over it, which will help help keep it you know alive a little longer. Or Placidip. Placidip actually will do just fine for helping that particular foam last longer as well. Yeah. And weren't your first few foam projects made out of that? Yep. It's yeah, affordable. That, it's affordable, and I remember seeing somebody specifically um, making a you know war door style uh, shield for LARPing for full on uh, LARP battles using foam and uh, plastidip, but he used the liquid plastidip and, and thinned it with naphtha or whatever material he used to thin it, um, and then and then brushed it on and then came back with the aerosol and hit the aerosol over the top of it, which helped level out a lot of the brush marks. That way the plastic was incredibly thick, but that made it far more durable uh, long term. That's a lot of thoughtful, you, you have to kind of know what problems you're going to be dealing with. Right, well, you're, yeah. I it's a shield. I can see the experience in there, you know. The, yeah. yeah, right. If you're going to shield bash, if you're going to, yeah. you know, weapons are going to hit it, what all these things are going to happen. What kind of does it need to be, like I said, I always threw it on the ground. Can it handle being shoved into a bin? Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if it's something being made for rental, you got to treat it like a rental. <laughs> yes. Um, da, 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 da. Squid Stick says, touching hot glue while it's hot is, and burning my fingers is fun. Well, congratulations, you enjoy it, and I have to admit, we all do it. Yeah, we've all done it. Lo so low temp hot glue is, yeah. I never use that stuff. I always use that. Yeah, me too. I always use high tip too. So remember, kids, sharp things cut, hot things burn. Yeah, don't touch hot glue. <laughs> Even if I do. Right. Don't sniff hot glue. No, wait, yes. what? Sniff hot glue? Does... That doesn't matter. No. Um, um, Tiges, again, Tiges, it's T-Y-G-E-S dot co dot uk dot co however the website works anyway they have a new formulated hot glue stick for eva foam it has an adhesive in it it's kind of a um, so it's fancy hot glue it's fancy hot that, glue that, that works nicely with foam yeah it isn't just a hot vinyl that melts it actually has uh, an adhesive quality to it that's interesting because yeah. i really 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 like fabric hot glue not for fabric because it's the worst thing in the world for fabric don't use it for that but i love it for plastic yeah because it just bonds the plastic as if it's just like welding it with plastic. Right. And it's not like hot glue where it'll rip and redo. It, it, it like makes this solid weld. But it's meant for fabric and it's definitely not a fabric hot glue. So sometimes when they tell me this hot glue is meant for this, I don't know if I believe them. <laughs> so Mr. Rooster's back. So welcome back. Welcome back, Mr. Rooster. Um, we got a hello, big hello from Germany. Well, hello. Commander Fawn, or how do you say that? F A O N. F A O N? F A O N. Uh, yeah. Fawn? 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 Well, hello. Hi, Commander. <laughs> hello in Germany. Hello, Commander F. And Mr. Rooster says, back in the New York groove. Well, welcome. And Phone Guy says, <laughs> and Phone Guy says, I have to read, and things move. Oh, things move. Yeah. The bone guy says things move. And in history lessons, I was making props from my book, and sometimes I got good grades for that. 
and my whole class wanted to, me to make a cannonball. You know, you make well, things people always ask. Can you make me that? Can you make right. me one of these? You, or you should make one of these, yeah. Oh, you might you might know a little bit about that? Maybe. What should you make out of? We got a hi from the Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Oh, hello, Czech Republic. Hello. And that's flip. I can't pronounce the other Truck. That's my best attempt. <laughs> Of course, you made all these nice dots, and we're going to cover them up right That's now. That's okay. <laughs> they, they're transferable. They That's are easy transfer. Peasy. We can get more dots. Anyways, we'll probably just glue it where we want anyways. Yeah. Um. So, Mel's Creation Station says, Hello, wonderful people. I'm crafting along with you. Oh, sweet. Hello, Mel's Creation Station. I'm glad you're crafting along with us, because... I prefer to craft with people than all by myself. Yeah. I think that's why I always came and bugged you. And I appreciate it, because... Uh, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you were in the back, and I was in the thing, and we had to work, and it got lonely and boring. Yep. yep. <laughs> and I appreciate when you come by the shop when I'm crafting, because... So, I'm standing here for hours doing my crafting thing while the cameras are running. That means I can't listen to anything that's copyrighted, or else I can't use any of the audio. Um, so, I'm standing here by myself, in the quiet... Crafting. All week. Sometimes. Sometimes Quietly it's not all week. Quietly making things. Quietly making things. Company's nice. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. There's times when I want to be alone, but other times I'm like, ah, this would be so much boring if I could just at least talk. Right. And then we got Cliff Overia says, hello from Portugal. Hello from Portugal. Hello, Portugal. Hey, Odin, maybe you make a Darth Vader helmet? <laughs> Maybe. I feel like we should put like a penny in a jar every time somebody gets you for a Darth Vader helmet. <laughs> and when it hits like a... Or, or the Ben 10 uh, um, Omnitrix. Um, yes. Yeah. Or... Is there anything keeping you from making that? No. Nope. Just nothing, nothing everything else coming up. Right. Nothing Nothing specifically is keeping me from making that. Um, it apparently has a big fan base. So. Yeah. I remember when the show came out. <laughs> yeah. I have a little brother named Ben. Because of the show? No. Okay. No. But yes, of course, we would make fun of him. Ben. Of course. Yeah. Right. Like my wife has a brother named John. So of course, what did they do? They named you after the toilet. Yeah. I have an Uncle John. Yeah. My dad was John. Yeah. yeah. I also have an Uncle Richard. I also have an Uncle Richard. <laughs> yeah. And thankfully, my Uncle Richard is Uncle Richard. He's not Uncle Dick. Well, that's, they, that's really good. Because well, he's my, not. Richard's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> all my cousins, all my cousins, all my aunts, they all have their long name and then the short name that that's it's been shortened to. Oh, okay. And so he used to go by Dicky, but then they he came home from school one day and it's like, don't call me that. And so they never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, would you make a pic Piccolo cape with its helmet? You don't uh, know who Piccolo is. Piccolo from Dragon Ball? Yeah. Okay. It's not out of the realm of possibilities, realm of but possibilities. it's not on the fourth front. But you guys right. mentioning it brings it closer. Yeah. Uh, I think getting the, the Saiyan armor finished first is kind of priority. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Because we could spend the entirety of, of the life of the uh, of the live stream making Dragon Ball stuff. But yeah. No, you, we wouldn't run out of content for no. that either. <laughs> no. Um, Jort says, at Fox Armor -er Cosplay... B, I has quite, quite affordable foams. That sounded like it made sense when I before I read it. Yeah, well, it's, it's going back to who, who's trying to make uh, cheap foams for LARPing. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like they're trying to give... Fox Armory Cosplay is a good source for a cheaper foam. Okay, I thought it was is Fox it? Armory, not, is it the name of it? No, at, at Fox Armor, that's... B? B I quite? I, I can't. Uh, yeah. I don't have my glasses on. I can't read Anyways, it. Anyways, I small. just trying. Yeah. Um, I, sh I shouldn't try. Because <laughs> Fox and Warmer, I know that as a username. So Mel's Creation Station says, You, Odin, is the reason I got a stash of foam. A oh. shield and horns are in the making. Felicia, Sweet. I have been keeping notes on sewing endeavors. Thank you for sharing your info and laughs. Aw, well, thank you. Awesome. Yes, no, ask questions. It gives us stuff to talk about, and I totally have opinions on things, so. <laughs> Don't you? And, and you're so timid to share them. 
Yes. <laughs> do I you do. have opinions on I foam? I have opinion. I have opinions on foam. I do. Yeah. And glues and adhesives. And glues and adhesives and snowboarding. Yes. Yes, yes and snowboarding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Big box prop says I don't have any clothes that don't have super glue on them. Yep, I don't have any clothes that don't have some sort of adhesive on them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have my paint clothes, and so I often wear my paint clothes over and over again to right. do this stuff, but. Come on, you curled up. I don't want you to curl up. Be careful not to touch the two sides. I would regret that. Come here. It's live. The pressure's on. The pressure's on. He's gonna mess it up. <laughs> don't breathe. Here comes swearing in five, four. <laughs> Tip, don't try to do any crafting or DIYing while under sudden depression. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, your mood definitely shows in your... Um, in, in your work. In, in your crafting. In if your... I'm in a bad mood, it'll keep getting worse and worse, and I will throw it on the ground, and if I go, don't walk away from it, it'll just get worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. But I go walk away, take a cup of coffee, and then come back. And yep. Yeah, it helps. It really does. Uh, and, and yeah, there's times when uh, I really want to shoot something, really need to shoot something, but my attitude won't let me yeah. actually be worthy of being on camera or just... Yeah, no, your mood definitely comes yeah. through in your art. Your motions. Yeah. They, they, they show their ugly faces if you are... But don't let being depressed keep you from crafting because then you will never do it. Like, trust me on oh, that yeah, one. Oh, yeah, for sure. But... Don't break yourself down. Give yourself little goals, little achievable things, and don't stop yourself. But also do recognize bad moods make bad crafts. All that, all that. Yeah. Um, there's times that I'll come down and go, okay, I just got to do a thing, and I'll just kind of start trying to get started. Usually about a half an hour in, it's like, all right, I can, I can turn the cameras on now. Yeah. yeah, you have to be gentle with yourself. Phone guy says, don't swear. <laughs> I swear. Don't I swear. swear. Um, William Brown, you're not an artist if you get art supplies on your clothes and skin. LOL. <laughs> then again, I did wear white to work on a project, and I do that often. Yeah, well, you just get dressed so you, you're happy with how you look and you're comfortable with what you want to have on. No, I just get my chip clothes cheap at the thrift store, so if it gets destroyed, I don't feel bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Box Armor says he was trying to give me advice on thinner foam. It's as durable as floor mats. I thought about oh, okay. SKS HD foam right. or TNT cosplay higher density foam. Any recommendation? I want to use six millimeters or less. So not a oh, thick foam. Not the 10 millimeter. Thin foam. Okay. And you want it the denser. It just comes down to um, how much you're going to buy and what the, uh, uh, you know, Shipping is a real thing, right? So you're ordering online to have something shipped to you, uh, whether it's from uh, Blick Art Supplies, sksprops.com, although I think he just references back to Blick now, or you get it from TNT Cosplay, or any of the other ones I'm not thinking of right now. Uh, shipping is real. So um, Add that I, on to the cost of the phone. Yeah. Uh, Blick Art Supply, if you buy enough, you can get free shipping. That number varies according to how they feel on, on any given week, because it's always a special. But um, when you're buying foam, it's usually three rolls and you'll make it. Um, so, so my advice if you're going for a cheaper, thinner foam and you don't really want to spend the money on the nice foam, I had a rant about interfacings and interlinings. Right. This is one of those things that you could add together different fabrics or materials to get the qualities that you want. So you use a thinner, like craft foam. Mm -hmm. But you glue it to a woven can canvas or muslin, and then you have the strength added to the foam. Or you can even do a card, like um, cardboard or a piece of plastic. Um, yep. Bleach bottles are my absolute favorite plastic to cut up because you can sew through it, you can cut it, you can glue it, and you can wash it um, without it like 
getting all wonky and stuff. So if you are trying to do it on the cheap, don't get stuck in, I can only use foam. You can use a lot of different materials and you can add them together to get the mm -hmm. material you want. That's my rant. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the TNT cosplay does have a high density foam. Uh, the higher density, whatever I'm, I've ordered it, it is more like what uh, you know, the, the soles of your shoes are done with. Um, and so it is definitely denser than the HD foam. Uh, so if that's what you want to go with, go with it if it's going to fit your budget. Yeah. But so. what she said is absolutely true too. I don't have, having the right supplies keep me from making projects. It never has and never will, right. even though it probably should. Well, I think they're just trying to, to help get opinions on what would be the best one to go for, not necessarily. The, the cheapest. The cheapest, yeah. Okay. okay, I thought they were trying to get the cheapest. Well, I think I think it was, like, what's what's the best option? What's the best, you know. It's not, quality not, to price. Yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of factors to take into there. Um... Yoga mats are sturdy, and maybe you find some cheap ones. Well, yoga mats aren't sturdy. They're very droopy. But right. yes, they are a great material, and I've used them in breakdancing clothing. But mm -hmm. And I've used yoga mats for, uh, like, seat cushion props, and, uh, and I was using yoga mats instead of EVA foam before but it EVA foam was super easy to get a hold of. Camping mats are yeah. actually uh, stiffer mm -hmm. uh, and would also make decent armor uh, for uh, for LARPing. But that's a polyethylene f type of foam. It's, it's It still works. You can still use contact cement with it, and I've seen it done. And if you fall on your back, you're comfortable. You're comfortable. <laughs> but it's still, you know, $10 a roll, but you can find that at Walmart, so. If it's still $10 and not If 20. it's still $10 a roll and not more now. Right, because I'm quoting prices from 20 years ago. Yeah, that's <laughs> Okay, Jeff Model says Amazon six millimeter EVA foam sheets rolls for about forty dollars. So, okay, that's a baseline to just reference things off of, I suppose. I suppose. How many? What size is that sheet? Because if that's even if it's a meter by two meters, that's a lot. Okay. Six mil. It also could about be four area. mil. Yeah. That still sounds like sounds like a lot. They say Michaels is selling HD foam now. Selling HD foam? Michaels has foam, has their own foam, the creatolo creatology foam. foam. Oh. It's white. It's not quite HD foam. It's EVA foam. It's rolls, and they, they, yeah, they do have it. But um, I'm pretty sure, as far as brand names go, uh, HD is unique for Blick. These, like, popsicle sticks make it, like, super straight and nice. <laughs> <laughs> Looks all impressive, like... Um, I'm trying. <laughs> right? Oh, Mel's Creation Station says Michael's does have foam, but it is overpriced. <laughs> yes, uh, the Creatology foam does seem to, to run. Now, they have sizes that HD foam doesn't carry, so you can get 8mm and 12mm. But, um, yeah, I think the square inch, it, it does run a little more and has a different texture. A different I shouldn't say texture. It has a different feel to it. Like, whatever the mix is, has a soapy type of feel to it. Yes, it has like a velvety texture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But honestly, it's whether you, if you order it, you have to pay for shipping. So you add that into the cost. Yeah. If you are driving to Michael's and you're already at Michael's Absolutely. and not going to the store, you need a specialty item, you don't want to wait. I just want to finish the project. I'm going to run. To, yeah. Yep, yep. So it's over price convenience versus, and then also Michael's accepts Joanne's coupons. So there's always that 40% off coupon that Mike, if Joanne's likes to throw out there. Yep. Never pay full price for anything if you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to, that's right. You missed the side. I don't need that side. Oh, think. okay. Because <laughs> it's just a little bit that goes across the top. Okay. And that's also why I use the slightly smaller piece because it's going to get all cut off anyway. Okay. And it's going to get covered, but you know. Oh, so you actually like know what you're doing, so oh, yeah. Trying to plan ahead. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> trying. It hurts. What would you recommend if you don't have any fun? Foam. <laughs> you don't have any fun. Uh, well, uh... <laughs> Monster Killer 36. There's 35 other, other Monster, Monster Killers. Killers? Well, that, uh, that but... I would believe. So what would I re recommend if you don't have foam? Yeah. Whatever material you want to work with. Um, I really latched onto foam very early on. Uh, <clears throat> 
A lot of the other materials that I would go with, because I'm so used to working with foam, are still foam-related. Camping yeah. mats, yoga mats, uh, all those things are still foam. Uh, you can get... Um, all right. Cardboard is readily available, and uh, it has its own special skills you learn in order to make cardboard work. But Or the plastic version of cardboard. Yeah, oh, the yeah, core plast is even yeah, but but cardboard you can do a lot with cardboard, and you can get some really detailed, really nice things. Um, you just have to plan ahead with how you're doing it because cardboard doesn't like making the compound curves. Yeah. The corrugations in it kind of it's the whole point why they're there. Yeah. Uh, what else? I've used so Rubbermaid container lids. Oh yeah. I've used those before at the costume shop to make armor. Okay. Um, cutting them with some really heavy duty scissors. It's just the heavy plastic, rubberized right. plastic and using that. But also, it's not the same as foam. It's just a different material you can use as your base, I guess. But but you just gotta look around. What do you got an abundance of? What do you need and how much is, you know what I mean? Right, What exactly. What are you gonna, what are you, what are you willing to try to work with? Yeah. Sometimes I'm just too afraid to start, you know, I know this material, so it's my comfort. And Absolutely. I just go to it each time because I know how to use it. As opposed to 3D printing something, you know, like I'd rather try and build it, mold it, or craft it than just printing it. <laughs> right. I actually spent a day trying to 3D print some stuff. You know, it worked out okay. I, I got it to work, but... At that point where you're like, I should have just done this out of foam? Sometimes. Unless foam it would be done by now? Feels like that, yes. <laughs> so... Of course, the one positive argument with, you know, if this was foam, I'd be done by now. Um, if the 3D printing is actually working, then you can do something else while it's 3D printing. Yeah, so that's it, true. So it does allow multitasking when it works, when it wants to be babysat because it's being a little pain in the ass. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things that once you kind of figure out, you have to figure it out. So, Mel's Creation Station. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've made wings from cardboard and foam. It needs repair after lending it out but oh. it's a salt but it, it's solid and then art man says at rosin i can't say his last name i would say no i've had some hd foam for almost two years and it hasn't decayed at all so yes hd foam it's gonna last if you make your project your right. project's not gonna decrade decrade <laughs> no it's not degrade gonna, no, on it's not you gonna it's gonna last this stuff probably right. will be into the apocalypse just you'll find <laughs> it in the sun will break it down so if you put it outside the uv light will 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 break it down but uh if, if it's not in the direct sunlight yeah, it's going to be around a while yeah you'll be fine yeah mel's creation says i'm jealous of 3d printing owners but much respect i know i don't have a 3d printer but i know somebody who has one who prints things mm-hmm I know somebody who has one that can successfully get things printed. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> I have a lot better luck with the resin printers for some reason. I like the quality of the resin prints. Yes. Better than the filament ones, although I want to play with the wood filament. Right. That looks really interesting. Agreed. Especially since you could um, sand it. it. Uh-huh. And treat it like, like wood putties and stuff like that. I feel like it, I, that I really want to get more into. Elisa Sales says make a Rambo knife. Okay. Uh, that Rambo style style uh, survival knife that was that was new for the movie, right? That was that you know. Because Bowie knives have been around, but the whole idea of the survival Rambo knife, I think, was for the movie. And I think the whole survival knives afterwards came out because of Rambo's knife, if I remember correctly. The internet will let you me know, know if I'm wrong. Right? Yep. There's Yay, back. Yay, stripes! <laughs> stripes! 
It's a fun movie. Stripes. Stripes, stripes. And, and... Uh, it's, it's great that um, putting... Uh, so I've got HD foam with glue on it. And I've got HD foam without glue on it. So the glue on the HD foam just colors it, right? Actually, that's not HD foam. That's the wrong thing to say. That's the wrong foam color. That's the wrong foam. But just, yeah. the end result is what you can't really quite see here. So there's HD foam with glue on it. It's really close to the same color as the uh, TNT cosplay 4 millimeter foam. That's what I was trying to go for, but I realized my example was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with the wrong Don't example. Don't worry, we're only live. Oh, okay. That's a noise. Is that another train? I think it's another train. <laughs> it's another train and someone stole the catalytic converter off of <laughs> Today is a nice train day. Isn't Today it? is a great train day. I've lost count. <laughs> so, how many strips do you think we'll get cut down to do? I think one strip per. Probably thing one would per probably thing. Yeah, and I have a few extra bits and pieces. I'll that use already first. Have glue. Yeah, they already have glue that I'll before I cut into those. So I cut way more than I needed, but it's better to whatever. have too many than not enough. And now you have one inch strips for other projects. Yes. You know, just in case you need it. Maybe make some hair. Um, thoughts on making a Darth Maul mask? Does Darth Maul wear a mask? Or is it a face paint? It's a, uh, well, tattoos. Tattoos. Yeah. Um, Looks more like paint to me. Well, it's more like paint, yeah, but it's, you know. It's supposed to be tattoos. I think it's supposed to be tattoos. Uh, thoughts on it? Yeah. I did that to my little brother with a red lipstick and some eyeliner, and I got in trouble when I was little, but it was I did, fun. I did it with stage makeup. <laughs> and I just took bits of couch foam and snipped out the real basic horns and then stuck them on with a ball cap and then stuck them on with a, a spirit gun. There's a ghost. It's trains. And, oh, and, that would make more sense. <laughs> right. Trains and, and uh, the whatever is, is moving. Yeah, no, just that. Give me one. Fell off the thing. So let's see. I have an FDM printer, and I have to say it's useful for solid projects. Just the other day I printed a 30-some hour low-poly ram horn, and it came out nice. Mm -hmm. All I have to do now is layer it in Warbla. There you go. Well... That sounds expensive to me and like out of my crafting <laughs> comfort zone. But I feel like that would be just like amazing when it's finished. No. Uh, low Warbler, poly then covering it with something totally would work. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like that would be the perfect way to get, deal with board books. I love that stuff. Except for I hate that stuff. But I love that stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I love that stuff. My wallet hates that stuff. Right. <laughs> I just like the, 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 the fruit roll upness. Yeah. That's where I lose it. Is if you overwork it and it gets to that point, I'm like, mm, you oh, know, okay. You know, well, it, when it cools, it stiffens back up, right? Yes, but you 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 work it too much, you can end up getting like you're pushing a fruit roll up too much, and it just mm. gets thin spots, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like it when it's warm, it feels like a fruit roll up, and even though you can mush it back into place, you can. There's a point where you've worked it too much, and that's just what I'm, I'm like. Yeah. It's not the easiest thing to do, use, I guess. It's not the worst, and I do like it, but my wallet does it, like you said. <laughs> uh, will you make an Evil Dead book? I thought about making a Necronomicon. Uh, I have not made one yet. Um, but I am not, I'm definitely Halloween's not. Coming up. There's plenty of Halloween's coming up. I'm an Evil Dead fan. I am not opposed to making a Necronomicon. Nope. <laughs> So, eventually. And eventually. I even know somebody who's uh, got reasonable rec rec you know, replicas of it. So, uh, what am I trying to say? Examples for what the pages are. Because in the movie, which I forgot the movie too, you can look at it. The Evil Dead 2, it flies around and you can actually see what a lot of the drawings are. I, yeah. Can't you order that book like on Amazon? Just a version of it? You can and order a version it? of Necronomicon, but the Necron Necronomicon that is... Uh, the general, like... From the book? Not self-help, but it, it's not the one from the movie at all. Oh, Necronomicon okay. is, um, um, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not the H.P. Lovecraft version. It's not the uh, Evil Dead version. It's, it's you know, yeah. 
disappointing. <laughs> When I use hot glue, my dad's like, okay, here you go, hot glue. And like one or two days, I'm like, Dad, could you get me hot glue? I just bought you a new one. Where did it all go? All hot glue goes. <laughs> yes, it does. It, it, it gets used up really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to get the, 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 the buy in bulk. Yeah, buy in bulk. Buy in bulk. And then if you're going through that much hot glue, you may have to step back and ask yourself, <laughs> Do you have a hot glue problem? Is this project going in the right direction? <laughs> <laughs> or are we compensating with glue at this point? <laughs> Sometimes you can build things up with hot glue and make the oh, details totally. and then, yeah, no. Oh, you can you can hot glue right into a like, silicon mold and just make it from hot glue, period. Yeah, like yeah. 3D printing with hot glue. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I feel ya. Well, 3D printing is hot glue. I mean, it is, yeah. The extruder is basically hot glue. It's plastic, it's, well, different, you know, so is hot glue, but... Um, phone guy wants to know how old you were when you started making props, but I think that answer was last week when you pulled out your props from <laughs> <laughs> Like an hour ago, yeah. <laughs> um, Odin makes <laughs> his name. <laughs> right. Um, generalized version of the props, when I think of what I said last week, week before, was probably 1977 when I was made the bandolier for my... Uh, Chewbacca costume, although I was six or seven, so um, I don't really know if I made it as much as talked about how I think it should have been made. But you know, you know it's one of those things. You had opinions on I that. I had knowledge. opinions on it, yes. You weren't going to let mom just put it together any old way. <laughs> yes, uh, Will Wilkins, Netheads, he's probably not here still. Same thing, as a, he was telling me as a kid he wanted a Spider Man mask, and mom's like, okay. And then, well, we need to put the webs on it. So she looks at it and goes, all right, and starts to just put a grid on it. Because, you know, ah, screw doing this. And Will's like, no, 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 it goes this way. So she said, oh, okay, here, this is how you do it. <laughs> and so Will embroidered <laughs> the webbing onto his mask because he wanted it done right. Yeah, no, it, 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 if yeah. you know enough. Good for her for <laughs> doing that. <laughs> well, honestly, if you know enough to care and you can sit there, yeah, yeah. No. Kids are completely capable. Yep. I teach them how to do back handsprings all the time. You, they can knit. You backhand kids all the time? Backhand kids all the time. All the time. All the time. Squeak! Oh, have Let's you try. ever thought of making a Ben 10 watch slash Omni Matrix? Oh, really? <laughs> Not in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> no, they may be serious. Uh, no, they are. Okay. It's 100%. You get that seriously every time we yeah. do a stream. And <laughs> You know, at this so it's point, not fair making fun of, but yeah. No, no, I know. I just laugh because it's like, hey, you haven't been asked that yet. <laughs> Darth Vader, like we should play bingo. <laughs> Have you been asked for this prop yet? <laughs> Odin makes bingo. <laughs> Print out your cards for next week. Um, make Loki scepter. Yep. Mel's creation says yes, Felicia. I hear you and agree on what I don't know, but. Thank you. Um, it was from up in the yeah, conversation a while ago. Possibly hot they glue. They agree with me, so yes. there's that. <laughs> Might have to be with, you know, do you have a hot glue problem or, you know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you need to walk away if you've gone through too much hot glue at this point. <laughs> just walk away. No, there's a lot of times where you just, the, the better option is to walk away. I hit a frustrating point. It's going nowhere. If I sit and fight with it, it's only going to get worse. Yep. I need to just breathe. And there's there's times when you are being hired to be creative, where you have to be creative. Oh, on a deadline. At work, and there's no not being creative at this moment. You know what you do? <laughs> you take a deep breath, you gotta walk away, get a sip of coffee, come back, and just chill the attitude out. <laughs> because you, it acknowledges your attitude, and you can... You grab your phone, and you hide in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. But... No, you're crafting your mood shows in it. Yeah. As much as you don't want it to. Make it to create. It says, I've tried to make an Evil Dead book. Was it successful? Cool. Uh, the cover can be really weird because it's the it's the texture, you know, supposedly bound in human flesh, right? So getting getting, getting the texture and the look of the cover down is, is going to be the hardest part. Speaking of that, somebody's asking. I'm asking. I'm asking so many questions, but how well would Plastidip slash metallic 
flex, flexi dip oh, okay. and then some kind of flexible sealer work for a box metallic effect on foam. And should I use matte or gloss? Okay. So, um, this material here I this. haven't worked with. Uh, I do have a can of the Rust-Oleum um, uh, vinyl repair spray for for uh, gutters and things. It's supposedly silver. I have yet to use it on foam. It should be fine. Um, so a lot of the materials you're specifically asking for I haven't actually used, which makes it a little harder to say, oh, we'll use this, this, and this. It'd probably be fine. Uh, just using Plasti Dip and then painting it with acrylic paints seems to do fine for me. Um, the, the biggest change between having something that looks like silver paint and having something that's got more of a, a metal look to it is black shoe polish. Black liquid shoe polish adds more than just black to it. It's got a little bit of brown and a little bit of something else in it. And it actually, when you wipe on the whole thing and then wipe it back off pretty immediately, you'll get it stuck in the, uh, in all the, the corners, crevices. all the crevices. But it'll overall change the sheen from fake looking silver paint to oh, an oxidized level oxidized metal, metal look yeah. yeah so you know wear and tear and dirt and grime it takes a lot of it to really show up it on does. camera and you can so we're being signaled that it is two o'clock let me get uh, this strap finished uh, did we get it all like most glue we cut got, out we got it cut out we got it cut out yeah glued pieces together so next week we could actually like glue it, we start glue gluing, it together. yeah actually start we'll gluing a, parts together I got two more pieces to put on. You got two more? Yep, this one and one more. Trash Panda saying Robo Undies. That was last Robo week. Robo Undies. That's that two was, weeks ago. No, that was the last week's episode. Two weeks ago for us. But no. last week for yeah. the video? No, it was just last Sunday. Last last, no, we no it was two weeks paper. ago. That's yeah. right. Because we two spent a whole episode figuring out what scale we needed. And now we know that 15% is a size medium and 20% is a size small. Right. And regular is about a size large to extra large because it fits you very comfortably. Mm -hmm. So. But the uh, Odin Mix episode last Wednesday was Robo Wendy's. Yeah. Yeah. Robo Wendy's. Robo Wendy's. Those turned out great, by the way. Thank you. Did the pattern work out? Yeah, the pattern worked out. Yeah. I made some modifications, but no, the pattern but, worked out. Yeah, no, honestly, I always give myself more to work with to trim down. Right. Because I'd rather just not have to. <laughs> Regret. <laughs> you can always take away. You yeah. cannot add more as easily no. without having seams and pains and seams and pains and frustrations filler and, and you know. Yep. Oh, look so we it. have two shoulder straps. We have a stomach piece, and we have a back piece. We have accomplished something today. We have accomplished something today. And then these are. Where's the center frame? Yeah, that's. That, that. No, you got that right. That's uh, I should have flipped it over. I kind of think I did it in the same way, so the, the curves aren't going the same. Oh, no, it's this way. It was this way and this way. And there's those kind of angle Wait. a little. <laughs> Which way is to this way, this way, this way? There that we way. go. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> right. We marked so it. this corner matches, and then this corner overlaps, and then it all, you know. Contours, together. mooshes together. And then these go here and here. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm glad we caught that before it dried. <laughs> Up there. And then this is the... And that's the back. And this is the back. Mm -hmm. so, right. Well, I was doing this so all the details pieces were up, up, but yeah. Yeah, I was going to put these on top. Okay, you can do that. So that it would be like that and well, that. goes on top. Yeah. And then these would hook over. Like that. And we're done! And there's a vest! <laughs> yeah, it's a vest. You just glue it together now and paint it and then you're done, right? Right. First you draw an oval, then you draw a line bisecting the and oval. And then you have a finished product. <laughs> this is, we do not have a pre-baked cake in the oven. And we're going to be able to bookend this live stream with another train. I've lost count. I have no idea how many trains. Uh, for those of you who just don't get why there's this constant train thing, it was just became kind of a joke, and, and we rolled with it, and today was an excessively heavy train day. Um, but I want to say thank you to everyone who decided to spend their time with us on this Sunday. Um, I've been having a lot of fun talking about all the different questions and things that you guys brought up, talking about... Craft supplies craft and crafting. Craft supplies and crafting. 
and my old teddy bear. And um, working with, with uh, Steven's SKS Props Dragon Ball Z armor. Yeah. Watch his video, print out his things, and then come back with us next week and we'll get it glued together together. Absolutely. And, and like she pointed out last week, it is a lot of fun to put together a pattern that someone else has made that you know works. You just follow along and you can do it. It's, it's, it I'm so used to making my own. It is a lot of fun and, and very relaxing to just work with someone else's pattern. Yeah, just so. go through the things. There's no crazy materials that we need to get other than nope. foam. Just knives. You don't need power tools. Don't need power We're tools. not dremeling. No, we well, could, I'm, but... I'm, I'm, we'll do some dremeling to clean up some of the edges, but it's, there, yeah. Like, I, I feel like this is one you can do with us. This is definitely one you can do with us. This is definitely a follow along and do one with us. Um, not going to touch this. Might dremel the edges a little bit just because of the whole dust thing. And the I'm noise. not touching it. But um, not going to touch this at all until next Sunday. So next Sunday, 11 a.m., uh, I'll be starting up with the patron only and, and, and Discord only live stream. And that'll be for the first hour for me. And then at noon, we'll go back to being uh, full public live, just like we are today. And everyone can come on back, and, and we'll be here. And we'll start the actual build. And we'll start the actual build at noon. Uh, but if you want to, want to get in early... While wanna, we set up. <laughs> while we have se set up, you want some private time, you want, you want uh, when, the, when chat's slower and quieter, definitely check out patreon.com slash makes, and you can get in on the Discord. Uh, we also do prop talks uh, once a week. Um, it, it, I'm actually active on the Discord, so it's another way to get a hold of me easily and directly. So, other than that, let's see. Um, I love this one. Bye, yeah. guys. I'm B2W Odin. I enjoyed the extra turns for the Mega Pants. My uh, showed them to my sister, and she says, "Oh, so equally Mecha Bloomers." Mecha Bloomers, yes. <laughs> mecha Bloomers, Mecha Diapers, Mecha, mecha Nappies, diapers, Mecha Nappies, Hot mm. Pants, Mecha Hot mm. Pants. Yeah, sure. Mecha Weeder um, Hosen, Mecha, mecha Undies. <laughs> uh, they're not Mecha Trousers yet. No. They're going to be mecha trousers, but there's, there's no legs, so they're not there's trousers no Yeah, they're, they're still a little under one of, the, one of the comments in the video was, uh, I should make the wrong trousers from Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have a pattern. Now I have a pattern. So, I think it's time for our long goodbye. It is our long goodbye. It is our long goodbye. Uh, by the way, if, if any of you remember, I've mentioned this a few times in the past, Kaiju Magazine, issue number two, is now available for download. So, kaijumagazine.com, uh, issue two, has an interview with me with lots of pictures, uh, all about making the uh, Mega Godzilla cosplay. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a fun magazine, too. And the yeah. guys, you know, it's all it's all Kaiju fan. It's the whole magazine. It's nothing but... Yeah, so, very cool. Yes. Yes. All right, well, we'll see you again next week. We'll be doing the exact same thing. And thank you all very much from wherever you are and whenever you are hanging out with us for the last two hours or three hours. And we will see you again next week. If they want to talk to you at all, just... Oh, yeah. That's I didn't right. click off yet, so... Oh, you didn't? Oh, yeah. No, no, we no. have control of that. That's right. Yeah, I, yeah. I forgot. They're still here. They're still, they're still watching? Oh no, okay, well. Uh, My cheeks are killing. I was thinking of that. Are they still here? <laughs> bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Now. bye, bye. bye. <laughs> so, Toby and Bruno have their own Instagram. If you need to see more of Toby's butt, you can see that at Toby's butt. We always look at Bruno's butt. Oh, Toby's excuse me, Bruno. They Bruno's never butt. see Toby. Oh, uh, Toby loves Bruno. Toby loves Bruno. Yeah, at Instagram. On Instagram, great. Yeah. And and then I have an Instagram, which is just Odin Makes. You are Odin Makes across all platforms. Oh, across all platforms. And I am. Eesh87 on Instagram if you guys want to catch me there. And that's E E S H underscore 87. Yes. Yes. 86 because and 85, 85 we're and taken. 89 were taken. Yeah, it sucks. Right. How many Eeshes are there? Because I originally was Eesh09. <laughs> you were 09 first, huh? So so you've been 09 and 87? Yeah. Okay, so, so apparently there's been 85 other Eeshes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Once, once, once again, 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 again. I think it's time for lunch. It's lunch time. <laughs> it's lunch time. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs>